I'm sitting there. Just... Oh, yeah. 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 oh, that's right. I am. Yeah. Uh, See, I read the minutes. Well, what kind of person <laughs> who changes the clock time? Sorry, I'm just making up for Kelly. No, well, I mean technically, I think you can. I don't know. Usually, I, I think only there's do anything once a year. That you can do what you want. That's all we used to do. Is I would do it once a year, but you can. I don't want to steal your thunder. Yeah, I don't care. You Take the glory. Um, I'm just saying. I don't know. I'd have to reread the rule. It's been too many years. All right, so what time is it? 6.03. Okay, so it's 6.03. I'm going to call this meeting of the select board to order. Do we have a motion to appoint a select board chair? I nominate, uh, or I make a motion to elect... Uh... Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I was this meeting is, is gone. <laughs> You're on to flash. We should probably just cancel. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Uh, Opposed? Sure, it would be Chris. Chris. <laughs> yeah. 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 It doesn't matter, I don't have enough. There you go, that's right, yeah. yeah. So we should just, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Too late now. Long yeah. pause there, Let's see if we, like, we'll see if we can get this out. thing turned around now. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. All right. So next on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have any amendments to the agenda? The only thing I had was just moving the the current appointment of the um, recreation committee to 6:30 rather than 6:05. Yeah, Ellie can't. And we'll be able to make it. it until that time, so we will push that appointment. Anybody have anything else that they want to add? Or? I move to accept the, the agenda as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> And public comment or inquiry. If there's anything that's not on the meeting agenda for this evening that anybody would like to bring up, or now's the time to do it. Kurt, anything? I was here to support the rec committee and uh, for the uh, for the skate park, and I can't stay till six thirty. So, um, so I just want to here express my. Uh, I'm in favor of, uh, of the town continuing to plan to support the skate park. Uh, the Bethel revitalization uh, group wrote, helped break, you know, grant proposals and things back when from the Tony Hawk Foundation and stuff. And I feel like uh, uh, I don't know what, where the status is at this point, but I, I would like to vocalize my support for that, for that to continue and not, not be sidetracked as, as the rumor has it is being. So, that's all. I mean, uh, currently, you know, um, long story short, anyways, but when it comes to the skate park, is there's been, you know, it's been a period of time of working on the skate park, so going on almost four years now. Um, and most of it's been, you know, there's always been a, a financial approved um, a lot of money for it. And, you know, this um, skate park has gone from you know, originally a $80,000 skate park. So at one point, I think it was almost unlimited because they thought they had some sort of grant that might give them, whatever, a couple hundred thousand. Um, and then we started talking about like how big would the skate park be even if Tony Hawk himself built it, you know, yeah. uh, made some parameters around that. And then, and in the last, you know, inside the last year, year and a half has been more of a, a lot of revisions on trying to get this, um, um, proposed park to fit the real financials that we have and, and going forward now with you know what is currently um, what they currently have for financials as well as maybe um, <clears throat> being able to add to the park between let's say now and when it's built with extra fundraising money so I think that's kind of where we left mm -hmm. it at this point is we would like to see something built yeah. um, just kind of let's do it um, or if if we can't because we you know, between design or financials, then let's move forward with whatever plan B or C is and maybe switch around or something. So I think that's where we're at. It seemed like we're pretty good moving forward. There was, um, I, don't, I don't know if you heard or not, but there was some soil borings, well, some test pits that were dug over there. And, you know, there is some, some clay over there that they were having um, some concerns with on the depth of that and how much extra it may or may not be to um, prepare the correct sub base over there so that you know we don't put this nice park together and a year later it's all cracking and moving so kind of the, I guess that's I mean if everybody else had any 
thing to add to it. That's in a nutshell. That's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I just like to. Uh, Ellie asked me to come give support on it, um, and and I know that I don't know that I always get the full story when she's talking to me. So I appreciate you giving me some some background on it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, there's a lot more details. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got four years of them. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So that's kind of where we're at right yeah. now, and we and tonight is really kind of a they were going back to the um, to the designer again to make sure that the budget fit the design that we could move forward with, and did that include I or what would that include yeah. with the <clears throat> the soil information that we gave them? Does that change the amount at mm -hmm. all or? I so, me so we're going to find that out tonight. So that was it. I'm sorry, sorry to Perfect. Jump your jump your gun on your recreation. <laughs> <laughs> Works. Anything else? Anybody have anything else? Questions? Yes. <clears throat> kind of killing time we really anyway. Um, I during the last meeting when you had talked about roadside mowing. You had said that they mow, right now the town's plan is to mow once a year. I guess what my first question is, when exactly are we doing that? And my second question is, is there any consideration around the invasive species? Because that's not really the best plan. And I know um, other people in the town definitely know a lot more about this than I do. But I know enough to know that I can certainly point you in the right direction with more information. But mowing once a year and mowing possibly as late as it sounds like, I don't know when you guys are planning on mowing, but it's not the best for controlling the chervil and the mustard and those sorts of things. Right. We actually don't know yet when we're mowing because um, I haven't put it out to bid yet. I just found that I was looking for some old information on what they had done in the past for RFP, so I have it. So it hasn't gone out yet, so we actually haven't set a time to mow yet. So, um, last year it was later, I think, than we would have liked because they were borrowing equipment from Barner. Um, we won't be doing that this year. We're putting it out to bid like we used to, and we always had better luck there. Um, as far as invasive species, you're right, chervil, um, oh, poison, parsnip, all that good stuff. You know, it used to be the state sprayed, and now that's, you know, people don't really do that. And, and, the, and the chervil is not going to... Mowing isn't going to control the chervil. That's you really have to dig that out by the root continuously. And, but um, so we will roadside mow, and we'll only do it once. It's really all we can. That's what we budget for at this point. And because you have 81 miles or 83 miles of road, so not that we do all of it, but we do a substantial amount. So it's a little pricey. So we do we will do it once a year. But at this point, um, Becky, I don't know when because um, I'll put it out to bid probably the beginning of April and then yeah. work it out. Well, in my understanding, at least on the churl, is you can, you, you will not kill it, but you no. will control the spread if you mow it yeah. twice a year and you do it at the correct times. And someone yeah. to talk to you about that who was an expert is Victoria Weber, who is on, I believe she's also on the conservation, is she on the conservation committee? Maybe. Maybe. She's, no. she's definitely yeah. on the town committee. Yeah. committee. Yeah. Um, so but she, she has expertise in that department. Yeah. And I know it's been a concern of hers in the past, and I have her in our town meeting. Mm -hmm. I said, I know you know more about this than me, but shouldn't they mow twice? And they're like, yeah. she's like, yes, and it needs to be earlier than they usually do. Yeah. So hopefully it will be earlier, but twice, no. We just don't have the money. We didn't pass it in that budget. So maybe in the future, but definitely not this coming year. I'm going to show you a of flour. It's already going to seed. Huh? The minute chervil flowers, yeah. it's already ready to seed. Yeah. So, I mean, when you cut it off when it's flowering, it's just a waste of time. Yeah. Best to pull it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I've heard, to dig it, and that's what I understood, too. Judy and I did that with Victoria for a good many years. And yeah. yeah. It's hard to keep some of that stuff under control because, oh. like you said, it spreads so easily, and it just... Yeah. Well, well, it spreads by roots and by seed, too. I mean, mm -hmm. it's... it's both ends. Yeah, and really, we don't. The reason, frankly, that we mow is really for um, sight distance for, for people to see, not really for yeah. getting rid of brush. Yeah, the state used to do spray for um, poison parsnip and all sorts of stuff, but then they stopped. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons they stopped is because it's not good for pollinators. Well, and plus, it's a pesticide, so probably people. Right, you don't want to you don't want to spray pesticides in the spring because it kills the bees. And yeah, so you know. people are upset. So yeah, so but, it's, but if you look at the state, they're out there mowing the, the highways at the worst possible time of the year, spreading the seeds everywhere. You know, like they do it right when it, it's in full bloom. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's definitely, probably best practice is to do it the way you're, 
you know, describe Choice, it. But, but yeah, we just probably probably not many people actually do it that way, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But something we can think of, or maybe work with the conservation. Um, yeah, the maybe if there's an area that's more identifiable as, or others, maybe there's something that we can do there. The whole interstate system from Barry to Old Plug River. <coughs> Anything else? All right, hearing none, we'll just move um, move forward with some of our items for the night. While we wait for, we're gonna wait till six thirty for you guys. I know Ellie was trying to get here, so she. Yep. Yep. So if she gets here before then, we'll move. We'll stop whatever we're doing. If not, we'll wait till six thirty for. So. <clears throat> so um, first on on our agenda <coughs> items here is to. Um, <coughs> is to set our, our meeting schedules. Um, currently, they are the second and fourth Mondays of the month. So first, is, um, does the board feel that we want to continue with the second and fourth Mondays of the month? Yep. Second would be, you know, it's not in here, but do the same time of 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we have a motion on the table. Just yeah, I'll make a motion that we set the meetings to the second and fourth Monday at 6 o'clock. Here at the town hall. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. And then the designation of the locations for the town to post the agenda items. Currently, we have the town office, we have the town clerk's office. Town clerk's office and no, I think that you currently use to... the town clerk's office, the town office, and post office. Right? The, I thought it was, do you do a third? I thought it was the website was your third. Where does you? No, no. I know, no, I'm not. Sorry, it's a library. I'm sorry, I have a brain cramp. It's a library. So use the library, sorry. Library, town clerk, town manager. Those are your current three. Okay. Sorry, let me think about it for a sec. So we're good with staying with those three designated sites? Yep. Okay, just need a motion for that. So move. Okay. Well, Okay, all in favor? Aye. Did you get all that, Lisa? Okay. Mm -hmm. If we're going too fast, just let us know because these, okay. these are just kind of the Try. rubber you stamp ones every right? year yeah. that <laughs> okay. we'll slow down for you. Nope, you're good. And then uh, next one is to designate the newspaper of record. Currently, we have Randolph Herald. So, unless anybody has anything they want to change there, nope. just need a motion mm -hmm. to. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. So Randolph Herald would be the newspaper of record. You okay with that, Lisa? Yep. Um, Nally motion, Brigham second. All in favor. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and then, um, and then, you know, currently Paul's in the capacity of doing the being the board member that. That gives a second over on the payroll um, and AP orders on behalf of the town. So I guess at this point, is Paul want to yeah, continue yeah. doing that or somebody sure. else? Or? No, that's fine with me. So we just need a motion to move to authorize Paul to sign payroll and AP orders on behalf of the town. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. John Hartland is, is currently the tree warden, and I would entertain a motion to reappoint him as the tree warden. So moved. Second. Feel in favor? Aye. Aye. We won't be doing all of our appointments. Um, no. At this um, meeting, <clears throat> right now, just the ones that have gotten back to us, the ones we were kind of appointing yeah, tonight. Yeah, just doing the regulars, and he'll do mm -hmm. all the committees next week, that, or not, in two weeks, that way Kelly had a chance to get back, you know, get in touch with everybody that was, that had a term that was up, which is really just the planning commission, the DRB, and maybe the conservation, you don't have a lot of committees with um, terms, so she was working on those. And then as <clears throat> Therese had noted here that that we don't need to um, appoint a fence viewer, pound keeper, oh. um, inspector of lumber, weir of coal. No, no longer needed. However, if we want to, or if there's somebody that wants to do that, I don't think it hurts to keep no. the tradition alive. Mm -hmm. So 
So if, help me to. Yeah, <laughs> but if we have um, if we have individuals that are in that capacity now that want to keep doing it, I guess you know. We I think that the fence the, people. Right? The pound keeper I think you made was Oscar. Was the Oscar. town off service yeah. officer was me. Uh, was your town manager. The inspector of lumber ware of coal was uh, Derek Wright. And um, I, she had two defense viewers, but their names escaped me at this point. I'm one of them. For you? I, was, yeah. I don't know who I the other Newt, was. I think Newt Wickham was. He didn't new, want to do it anymore. Do it. Yeah. And so, um, but then what I was. What we look at is tree, uh, fire warden. That is a five year appointment, and okay. currently Bob Dean is not up yet. Okay. I, um, I think that runs until June of. Is it 2020 or 2021, mm -hmm. but that I did approach the fire department about making a deputy fire warden and kind of you know nailing down mm -hmm. the rules a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that has been is out for discussion at the fire department, and they're kind of okay. seeing about the uh, THO town T health officer. The town health officer does not um, is up. next up, and mm -hmm. his term expires. He is interested. Last time I talked about continuing, mm -hmm. and we spoke. And I uh, told him, I think he'd been to a recent training. and What's well, up at the end of March, him, isn't it? Yeah, I told yeah. him to mull it over. And uh, he was going to get back to me. So mm. he said, I go to these trainings, I get re-inspired, he said. So and he had been to one recently. So uh, we'll see. But that's that does come up at the end of March. Okay. So I have the thing in my bag for next <coughs> week. Okay. And last we have is a motion to adopt the rules of procedure on how meetings will be run, which currently is Robert's rules. Um, I, I assume that's what you had done in the past, was how you had done that. Yeah, I mean, we've run it the same way as we would the town meeting, so yeah. it's under Robert's rules unless identified differently by the Vermont State statute. So, yes. okay. If we get a motion for that. Motion, uh, so moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So you can, there was a whole policy you can do and adopt, and I was like, right. I don't know, I was assuming they had gone by Robert's rules. No, we've so always we've kind of a sheet that we've had to sign that showed all our procedures for select board meetings. Huh? Yeah. I, I, I've seen it. There's a draft yeah. policy kicking around. No, this is a, a, I don't know if I brought it with me or not. What was it coming out? I've never signed one. You, Chris? Mm, I can't remember. It's been a while, but I know we had the, um, no. When we first came on, there was the. You would have had a conflict there of was, interest. There was the select, yeah, but there was the select board member binder, yeah. and I think there was mm -hmm. rules in that. This is like a two, two page, three page thing that we had that have signatures at the end of it mm -hmm. that, out, you know, lays out the procedures for select board. Well, if you find it, yes, I have it. I just didn't bring it with me. Yeah, because I was looking at it. That's why when I. I was like, oh, it must be. That's why I put Robert's rules of parentheses. I assume that's what he did. But well, <clears throat> all right. So it takes care of those. It's six twenty, but um, if the recreation committee is good with proceeding at this time, we'll plug you in ten minutes early. Yeah, we're here. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey. All right. Yeah. All right. So we will. So, so we'll continue our discussion that we had um, from last meeting, um, where you know, to leave off our last discussion where we were at was um, we had some new information for the soil uh, exploring exploration um, digging that we did out there, and at that time the rec committee was going to take that information and get it to the designer to see if that changes his design or the cost of that design at all and then we were going to report back at this meeting to yes. um, move should, forward. Should or, report okay. Yeah. Um, so I've been working with Michael. Um, he's not a professional engineer, not a civil engineer, but he does a lot of concrete work. Um, his take is that he's responsible for the, the 12 inches of stone and the part that's above that. If there are soil defects uh, below that, it's on us to to remedy that before he does, before he dives into his work. Um, so he's a builder. He's not. He's not an engineer. Um, so if we're trying to solve the uh, the runoff issue, well, we need to find our own expertise that will satisfy you folks uh, as well as him. Obviously, he would go with something hokey. So, like, I guess at this point, I mean the. 
um, I guess the information I'm looking for anyways is in his quote he had covered you know the foot uh, <clears throat> but if if the soil right now at, at least in the areas that we know of I mean it could the soil could change as you're building across mm -hmm. but you know if it did stay consistent at I think it was about two and a half feet yeah two of clay four, yeah um, you know what is that extra foot and a half with the cost to remove that clay um, you know and then how, how does that fit into the budget does that you know do we have to come up with more money does it adjust the design of the park to build you know a better sub base infrastructure for the concrete I, I, believe, um, I believe Therese has received a couple quotes I did yep yeah. and the slugs yeah they have them there well they're mm -hmm. not the quotes but they're, they have the amounts like 10k to 12k yep yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I got and that's nine, just for the additive 99.84 that's just for, for them no that's them just like we talked is that just for the extra foot and a half of digging or is that it's for the whole thing? thing it's for the whole thing it's for them to remove you know I'd put the I'd given them what we needed to do, which was basically ex excavate down. Um, so they, you know, he, one guy was assuming, okay, if you got four foot of snow, and they both agreed that it's going to be inch and a quarter in order to get the compaction that you want. And I just told them what the soil was, that we had the top soil, and then we had a couple feet down. And then, so option, so first foot was top soil, the second third, fourth were clay, and then it went back down to soil again. So I was telling them, we know we needed to dig that out and get rid of the clay, we needed to fill it in. So he had, they had four feet of stone um, in a 20 by 80. And, um, you know, the town hauling, as we had talked about them, including the materials, and includes them using their machinery, as well as um, compacting it. So, so the um, quotes, oh, I just wanted to uh, write it down so I can see it. So the quotes included a four feet of excavation yeah. and then Yeah, that's what I'm looking material. at. His, yep, his was, um, yeah, because he had 307 cubic yards of material and and, and WB had 336 cubic yards, so they both were pretty close. And so. that would be installed. And that was for four feet of fill? Yep. I, I think that goes in the wind column. For the, I think we were looking at 9K just in materials from somebody else. Yeah. Not so I guess and I didn't take off the top <coughs> foot for, sure. for Parker. I figured he, but that means Parker could just right. lower his bid by that foot because once we have somebody in and compacting it, we were going to deal with it. And, and look, <coughs> nobody here is. Bottom line is nobody is going to um, warranty the skate park because these guys warranty their work, but they said we're not warrantying his concrete work and he's not going to warranty his concrete work because he didn't put this stuff in the ground. That would be my guess. So if if, if these bids are somewhere around 10, 10 to $12,000, yeah, and then one's 12. do we have any idea what Parker's amount to do the one foot of excavation is part of his quote. I mean, how much money that is. Last time, I think he said he'd knock it down a thousand dollars. He would take a thousand off. Yeah. yeah. His quote wasn't very well put. I mean, he was just said he'd do it for fifty-five thousand. He had three thousand and cement and rebar. There was nothing. That's all the quote he gave us. Yeah, when we look, I mean, we, but we had asked him last time if we did something, if we did the foot, he said he'd knock off a thousand dollars. So, because we'd asked him this in one of the other iterations, right? If, if he did the excavation, he'd knock off a thousand dollars. Yeah. But that wouldn't, and that would mean he would still be providing the stone. So the fact that we're excavating and providing the stone for ten k, yeah, it seems like we're coming in. Like he would knock the thousand off for the excavation, and I don't know what he had built in his price for stone. I don't know. I can't. I don't know. But the stone the price, price, there'd be some sort of savings. Yeah, the stone price. Yeah, can't right now. Yeah, his stone. His stone originally was nine thousand. Yeah, because one guy's stone is. Let's see, he's got eighty four hundred, and he's got. Yeah, he originally said nine thousand for stone. Yeah. Who, who said nine thousand for stone? Parker. When he. When he. When we. When we said we couldn't do, and he itemized everything for me, so that he said um, nine thousand If he had to do more, or that was for his initial quota, and I'm confused. That was for him to break out the stone portion of his turnkey quote. So I'm just trying to figure out right now if his if his proposal to us is fifty five thousand, which includes. The whole scope of work, 
which on the sub base end of things quote was one foot thickness. And if we end up signing up a contractor, the contractor to do the base work, how much does that fifty five turn into? Forty five. Forty seven or it should come down. I don't know how much. It should I would have guessed. I sent I sent an email like ten minutes ago yeah. to Therese mm -hmm. uh, and Michael said he came in. I mean reducing the because I would think it would be about a thousand off for the excavation, nine for them, so we can about ten. Because this has to come out of the recreation fund, anyways. Because yeah. I mean, I, I guess the goal is, I mean, we're probably not going to find obviously anybody that's going to warranty it a hundred percent. Because, mm -hmm. however, we don't want to, you know, we want to use the half practices. half build something and then, you know, a year later we go through a of cycle and it's yeah. cracked, you know. I Seems mean, like Michael would come over that, so. while the contractor was there doing the work and just to make sure he's comfortable with everything. Like I would think they would have a pre-meeting, Michael mm -hmm. and the contractor, to agree on, you know, everything and Michael can shoot the grades, whatever, and seems like that he could come over and make sure that it's being done the way he... Yeah. I mean, I would feel comfortable based on, you know, the, you know, normally we build things to four feet when we're talking about frost, so if we're taking out four feet of material mm -hmm. and putting four feet in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. And maybe I'm just not following this correctly, but we're seeing another contractor has said for around 10 grand, they'll dig out four feet and fill it with crushed stone at a, what do you say, an ancient something side? Ancient quarter stone. Ancient quarter stone. But then we're seeing that this other guy who's going to actually do the concrete work was going to only do a foot only dig out a foot and only fill a foot, and he was saying that it was going to be ten grand just to do that foot. The numbers don't make sense. Well, you're not thinking about Michael Parker. Is his forte is skate parks, not excavation and crushed stone. And we're talking right. about people whose fortes are and some of that and, and some of that stone. too. So like it's all about equipment. They may or may not right. already on own. Parker's on Parker's. Like the town is going to have to truck in stone, right? That was part of the deal, wasn't it? Not the we weren't so providing the materials. One detail I'm concerned. I just want to make sure we're not overlooking. What size stone did Parker say he was going to use, though? I don't recall. Talking. He didn't stay. Because I thought last meeting we talked about that, and it sounded like if it's crushed smaller, it's more expensive, and he had a smaller crush than we guys had talked about filling the four feet with. And is that possibly the difference? The difference I, is I, my I, my my worry. I I recall his him saying that he wanted the stone not to be too big. Mm -hmm. And it may be that his top layer needs to be something smaller, um, so you don't lose that um, the terrain building crushed ledge. You don't want that getting lost in the stone. Yeah, so and for the contractors, they bid what we asked them to do, which was to bid because we're trying to mitigate the clay, which is just going to make everything a, an issue over there. So, um, and again, since Michael's bid is vague, he doesn't, he never says what kind of stone he's putting in or anything, so it's hard to, no, but we could work with him on that. We just were looking for a ballpark price to get this thing excavated and to get stone in. So, so if he, he needs something else to be the top foot, in, we'll deal with it. it comes in like, at like 8K for three feet and Michael still has to refill that last 12 inches with his stuff. Huh. It's still going to be a lot more reasonable than we thought. Yeah. It was and he can just tell them we can meet. We'll meet with him before and have him and the contractor, the low bidder, meet and got, and if he wants something different in the top layer, then that's what we'll do. It seems like because we need it compacted, so we need to get it done. So that's no problem. If they need something else in the top layer, then we'll make that happen. So the wasn't like a detail that only my brain had latched onto. It's an important detail. So, and we, we definitely got to check that box. That's why I was saying we have a pre-meeting. That way the, Michael can meet with the contractor. That way they can sort out any issues and look at the site together and, you know, agree with everything. And we were going to compact in two lifts. Maybe that's not what he wants. So we'll sort, you know, we'll have to meet him to sort all that out. So we're looking at this point that the 55,000 is more going to be more 65,000. I don't think so because you're gonna. Have, Michael's gonna have to drop his price. Yeah, but not, I don't know. I think he, in his last yeah. bid, he was supplying the stone. He said. He yeah, but I think he's still gonna have to do something. I mean, he's he on is. his end because you're not gonna build. You're not gonna put a concrete pad of his over you know inch and a half stone. Well, and that's want, fine. We can get them together to you know, meet. A finer stone on top. I think that we can mm -hmm. get them together. And do his own prep work. It's still yeah. fifty-five plus ten. Right. I'm thinking. 
you don't allow it to be 55 plus 10. I think that there's a That's budget and, and we need. That's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we get the two of them together to decide because maybe we decide, okay, we'll put three feet of inch and a quarter and then the last foot is something else. And But Michael, his last bid for the 55,000 did include the stone because I was specific in my um, information back to them saying, look, the select board said in kind and it was not materials. So his 55,000 included materials. Um, so I do you're, think you're that there's a savings there. I, I'd like to correct this a little bit. Um, when Michael's original bid came in at 55, it included us providing truckloads, like truckloads of material. Right. Which we don't have, and equipment which we don't have. Right. So it was a misnomer coming in at 55. That's, okay. That, that, was, that was not an actual 55. Okay. His next bid came in like 75 or so. Okay. Of which, you know, he'd knock 1K off for some excavation that we could do. Right. Um, but again, he would be providing... So you are saying that it's going to be 55 plus 10. So, so hang tight. Yeah. So his second quote was around 75. Yep. Um, he submitted a third one. Well, I don't know if... Not formally submitted, but he sent me an email. Um, I redesigned the park to fit the 55K budget. Uh, the deck sizes have been reduced to 4 feet. Uh, the height of the large quarter pipe is six feet. Uh, the jump box is four feet six. The small quarter pipes are two feet six. And the manual pad is 12 feet long by four feet wide by six inches tall. So so I, I bid it out as 20 by 20 by 80. 80. So you're saying he's it's still, still the same okay. footprint, but he's reduced the size of some of the terrain okay. to, to come into the window that lets us operate. Um, so he, he, sub, he will be submitting an um, actual 55K option. Um, it would include him providing all of that, that 12 inches of stone. Uh -huh. but, but now we're talking 55K hybrid something something, three feet of stone from this yep. other place. Okay. And so I, I think we're, we're in much, a much better place than we were yeah. you know, two weeks ago with this. Yeah. So it does, so it looks like, so I guess you are 65. I was thinking the 55 had the stone in it. So. I just bet you had before. I didn't see anything on the yes. adage of concrete or, or the amount of rebar he was putting in. It just said concrete and rebar. Yeah. That's the way I read it. I mean, <clears throat> I guess you can cut corners if the fellow wants to, but just a bit so of a at, If we're at 63, what was our, what's the Rex budget currently at? What was it, 57? Well, yeah, we have over 57. We have over 57. Not by but about so cents. at this point we're looking at yeah. six or seven thousand dollars over what the what the skate park the approved yeah. Yeah. financial yeah. for yeah. so at this point that's basically what we're talking about is the extra six or seven thousand that you know that we would um, you know maybe there's some options to with these contractors to um you know, maybe we could haul the stone or, you know, well, one of them, a little I, bit of money actually, that way. No, or, that is the price. That is, um, in the $9,000 price, that is us hauling the stone. Because okay. that's what I said was we would haul out the materials and, you know, we would work with the contractor. So this, that, the, so the $9,000, the, low the lowest bid includes that, <laughs> yeah. And then um, includes, and the other one did too. The, the, mm -hmm. The other contractor bid it twice, <laughs> one with us helping him and one without us helping him, and the one without us helping him was cheaper. <laughs> He's like, you're just gonna get me. So, um, but the nine thousand dollar price includes the town helping, it includes us trucking and you know the material and hauling and all that stuff in. So um, that material's on us or on the contractor? It's in the price, the nine thousand nine eighty included. They're furnishing the, the included the materials, yeah. So if we need to tweak that top layer, it needs to be something else. That's fine. We'll we'll have a meeting with Michael because we need, you know, Michael needs to come over so we can stake it out, and he needs to meet with the contractor so they're both on the same page. So Michael gets what he needs to to pour. But yeah, and any money above the fifty-seven thousand yeah. has to come out of the recreation fund because. We just don't have this budgeted anywhere else in the budget. Um, we, we are applying for the Turan Foundation that is due March 15th, and that is in the process of that yeah, we're applying for that. Right, yeah, we just don't know how much we're going to get. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying it needs to come out yeah. of the rec fund because we don't have any money anywhere else okay. to, put, to pull the yeah. additional money. We are and, 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 um, and I know you all, I have tickets 
You all can buy a ticket for this wonderful fundraiser that we're doing April 24th. And we, we know we're, we're having a goal to raise 10,000 this spring and summer. That's our goal. I'd like to bring up an idea. I'm not sure how well received it'll be. Um, this this is a soil defect that's on the site of the property, as far as what we're trying to install there. You know, we've got a pool house, and that obviously has a proper foundation. We've got a pool that's got a proper foundation. We had tennis courts that had a proper foundation. Um, so putting this in um, where it is right now with existing drainage and soil issues. You know, it seems to me at least reasonable that some of the uh, rec um, improvement funds could be directed toward toward this repair for the defects. Um, I'm not sure, you know, what your what your two cents is on that, but I want to at least pitch that idea. You know, we're we're within spitting distance on this project. Um, to me, and I, I think we could look very seriously at locking in with Parker for some of build. Um, but I want, I want you guys to have a warm fuzzy on this. And I think that's where the money would have to come from. I mean, it makes sense. There is money in that fund to be used over in that area. Um, so if they um, fundraise more money, it can go to offset that to basically to reimburse the fund for the next project, you know, that will come up over there. Well, I guess that would be the question. If, <clears throat> if the, you know, the new perceived cost is sixty-four thousand. We have fifty-seven, so there's a seven thousand dollar difference. <clears throat> you know, any of the fundraising money that does happen between now and then, does that go to pay down the seven thousand, or does that go to increase the part by whatever amount? Mm -hmm. You know, I guess that would have to be decided now. Too. Yeah, that's your decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I would how say does, it goes uh, to offset it first, and if they yeah. exceed that seven thousand, yeah. then, then they add it goes to back it. into the kitty, yeah. Yeah. you know, for the balance. That's what we would plan is to offset it. So you're doing the drainage, you're doing the ditch, right? You're cleaning out the ditch, right? Not, not in this price, I'm not. Oh. I'm going to get it done this summer, oh. yeah. Because that was one of the things, one of the bidders used to mow over there, and they said, yeah, it's some oh. clay, it's good, pretty wet. So we will, but I would still need to have a separate conversation with Carol Ketchum and look at the property, because we need to go further up that bank to deal with some water runoff. So oh. we're definitely dealing with it, um, but not in this price tag. Right now, it's just coming down a flood. No, but after you re-ditch this, where's it going to go? I don't know. I'll let you know once I get over there and the snow melts and we get a chance to go up and walk the bank and look at it. Right. I don't want to be with Carol, too, because that ditch used to be along there and right on his property, too, out back. So. It probably went out behind the high school, out into oh, I think behind so, yeah. the trailer park. Could imagine. be. So we're going to walk it um, no. in April. I don't think it went that far. I think it went over there in Lynch. I don't you think get, it gets to the very edge of GW's property. Mm -hmm. It's like a ten-foot lift. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all ledge. Yeah. And so some of it too. Go. I think right, I want to right back into the Valley Motors backyard. Yeah. There was a pond every spring. Was there? Mm -hmm. And some of it too, we can deal with ourselves on site by digging down further and putting in some rock and trying to create something to help permeate to see what we have to. And there. Also, <coughs> some of it is we have to go up. And I think you and I, and I know Tim had talked about that. Go off the bank a little to deviate some of that water, maybe from old logging roads and stuff to try to. Well, there's, there's a uh, drainage that comes off there. Yeah. And I assume natural resources would call that a perennial stream. Mm -hmm. So you can't screw around with that. No. No, I'm just kidding. No, so we have to walk. I haven't walked it most, so I can't tell you with any authority what the deal is. But um, I had, we'll, but we'll talk to Carol. And, but like I said, worst case scenario, we'll dig it. We have to dig out the base of the ditch. Worst case scenario, we dig deeper and put some stone in there and try to deal with our own, you know, drainage right there, seeing what we find. Find ditch to down hit the gravel. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So. Are we going to have time to do all this? I mean, it seems like we've got a lot of projects on the fire. Well, we do, summer, I mean, but some of the, but a lot of the projects are not the road crews to be done. Like yeah. this will be done by somebody else. The um, P vine will be done by somebody else. The 2.8 million is somebody else. The um, bridge is somebody else. So for the road crew, I think that they can manage doing some ditching. I had already spoke to Alan about this, so he knows it has to be done. And the roadside mowing is somebody else. <coughs> the ditching is somebody else. So I, I think they'll be all right. But we'd already talked about it, so he did have this on his radar. Okay. All right. <coughs>
So I guess to make things easier and get moving forward, you know, I guess I would <clears throat> entertain a motion to allow the uh, recreation committee to take an additional seven thousand from the recreation committee capital fund to add to the skateboard park um, to take care of the extra <clears throat> sub base corrections that need to be done there. Um, at the same time that any fundraising money that would be raised would go towards the seven thousand to pay down that first, and any anything that exceeds that they would keep into. The park. So you're going to give them a sixty-two thousand dollar budget, and then um, sixty-four. So six. You said fifty-five. Because they have yeah, they fifty-seven. And then oh, they have fifty-seven. Oh, oh, I got them. So you're not adding this okay. new sub basin I somewhere around sixty-four okay. might be a little bit less okay. if we get a little bit more. But I was, but I was starting. I thought he gave us a seventy-five thousand option. Yeah, but he's got he's got a new fifty-five thousand one coming yeah. plus the you know let's just say nine for the sub base. But if he gives us a credit, then obviously that, you know, yeah. you guys are buying, paying that back that much faster, right? So. Yeah. How so much money is in that, that account now? I don't have the town report with me, but there was. Well, it was close to 100,000. 100 and something thousand. 102. It does, it's fine. It was like, a, I think that's about right. So it was over 100,000. It's about 60,000 of other yeah, money. Other money. That's yeah. what I'm getting at. Yeah. So, um, so that's what we take the fifty-seven thousand that they've already raised plus seven for sixty-four, and um, so I guess the the total amount that we're authorizing at this point, because originally, hold on. So originally we we had to authorize as a select board for them to use fifty thousand, and they, right. you guys have that seven thousand and changes your extra money that you've right. raised. Yeah. Right. So I guess on our end of things now we're saying that. We are authorizing fifty-seven thousand dollars worth of funding to be used for the skate park. Does that sound right? And they have the additional seven. And they have the so they have their own seven thousand that was through fundraising and Tony mm -hmm. Hawk, and right. so the total amount was somewhere around sixty-four thousand for the park, right. including the contractor. <coughs> to right. Do the, that includes. Does that sure. sound sound right? Mm -hmm. Just to keep things. So if that's apples the case, to apples. Then, yeah, then. Um. So I guess I would entertain a motion to increase the the um, uh, increase the budget for the skate park from fifty thousand to fifty seven thousand um, with the recreation committee capital fund. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor. Who would do the motion? motion. Okay. Everybody good? Did you vote? All in favor, so we got two. Aye. Motion, second. No. David? Well, I'm gonna say no. All right, I'm gonna say yes, so we're gonna move forward. So the 57,000 <clears> is their budget for the skate park. Plus, you're going to give them their seven, and we're going to take the low bidder out of this 64. I think there's some opportunity to revise that quote with, you know, it what? sounds like at this point we could probably, well, we could see if we went from four feet to three feet what that would do for Right, yeah, quote. sure. So I'm just being, yeah. And take dip whatever the best difference between Parker's and that. Yeah. Um, it might be better to do three feet and have Parker do his own one foot and then yeah. that way he can prep it exactly how he wants it. Yeah, so what we'll do is then... That might save that a little bit. Yeah. So okay. overall it might be less than 64, but... Right, <clears throat> so I'll set up a meeting. So then, um, so then you would... You've already made a motion to agree to hire... To sole source to, yep. um, so then I guess I would need a motion to, um, Authorized me to work with um, the little bidder, <coughs> which was negotiate. Right, but you're gonna, yeah, I will, I will. What I'm just saying is there's too much North Road excavation. I mean, you know, we're hearing this, we're hearing that, and and this skateboard park, he's he's never put us a real bid in for for anything. He just said he's going to do it. He was very vague on his materials. I mean, that's not the way that I look at putting out contracts. It's, you'd love to put out a bunch of contracts that way for your paving, wouldn't you, with no materials? Well, I mean, I would say right now, 
you know, I guess the motion that we made was was just for the funding of the park, not the. I guess, I guess what I'd like to see um, would be a final quote, a final, detailed. a final detailed official quote from Parker, and then a final detailed quote from whoever the excavation company that you're so working with, the low bidder, based on the new details. So, so could we get a list of bullet points of things that you guys are concerned about that were not present in his original quotes? No. We've, I've read so many of his quotes. To have, to have them <clears throat> listed out so that when he submits it, it's all it's got a list of all the boxes checked. I think he just needs to give us an itemized bill, and he knows how to do that. He knows how to give us an itemized bill. I would just tell him that's what they're looking for. He knows how to separate, um, you know, equipment hours, man hours, and um, yeah, exactly, all that. Right. Any, and anything that the town has to pick up on, yeah. you know, just it needs to be clear because we don't want to get. You know, right now this is a stretch. I mean, we've we've stretched the budget. Mm -hmm. This is a stretch, and I guess what we, you know, if I'm hearing Mo and Dave correctly, is we just won't want to be here two months from now coming back to the table saying, okay, 64 now has turned into 70. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the fear at the table if I'm sensing it right, and and that's my fear too. I mean, one, I want to, I'd like to see something go forward there. Um, it does seem like we are close, and yeah. would like to see something move there, but. We also have to have a little reassurance that the number we've raised to is doable and let's move forward with it um, rather than mm -hmm. you know get into it and then find out that oh the town was supposed to pick that up and now it's going to cost us more money so and i have a detailed breakdown because i bid it in a detail to these two so it would be north road excavation but i have a detailed yeah. hourly rates cubic yard prices so i can my number will work i so, can make right. it work because i have a very detailed bid so, so um, so maybe for the next meeting we could have it cleared up both bid yeah. sheets on you know, yeah. exactly what each one is. Well, that once, way I know we know he, we've, once I know what um, Michael, you know, what he wants that, if he wants to do that last yard or whatever, then that's fine. But I, I have, I broke mine out detailed, so I have an hourly rate, a different rate, three yard price, so I'm good. Does it, uh, yep. say, kind of, I mean, does it make sense though? Because you were talking about getting the contractor and Michael together and having them be like, oh, well, I'll do this and you do that, and then they can figure out what they're going to charge. Does it make, I agree that you, it sounds like you need a much more detailed quote with more things listed more specifically in amount, but how can he do that if, like, you're like well, maybe we'll do, the contractor will do three feet, maybe we, he'll just tell the contractor what he wants and they'll do four feet and he'll take off. So shouldn't those decisions be maybe ironed out and then he can give you a more concrete quote when he knows exactly what he's doing and the contractor knows exactly what they're doing? I think once Michael tells us what he's doing, we're all set because we don't know exactly what he has for price for how many yards or whatever. My Our bid is pretty detailed and we know what we have to do on our end to mitigate the um, to mitigate the clay. I just think that it would, we always have pre pre meet, you know, pre bit pre work meetings. Like we sit down for the construction and chat mostly too, just so um, if he's going to shoot the elevations, we want him to inspect the compaction just to make sure he's happy with things as it goes. So I think basically what we're looking for is just more detail on his part. And then yeah. I think we'll be all right. I mean, I think and we'll meet in advance. So just probably the best way to do it would be to have Parker continue to do the upper one foot. That way he can do his own his own final prep because yeah and then have the uh, local contractor I'll ask, I'll ask do the you. do the remaining three feet um, because <coughs> if, if you had the local contractor do all four feet then Parker's probably going to want to charge you something to prep and you know get it to the point where you can pour concrete so it might be better to revise your local. That's fine. Well, I can do it. I can knock off. But work price. together to see which way the numbers work the best. Yeah, you know, if it works better to have the local guy do it, then. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. Off the top of my head, it sounds like it'd be better to have the local folks do it. Yeah. Just ask Michael what he wants the top foot to be. I mean, really. I'll, I'll ask his preference. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. Dropping in stone and compacting is certainly something Michael doesn't have to do to do. Exactly. He, he may do a final grade on it. Yeah. He wasn't going to compact as part of the yeah, and once we sign the, um, when we get ready to sign, so obviously we'll need W-9, proof of insurance, all that sort of stuff, and and um, the agreement still stands. He has to take responsibility for the site. Once he gets there, he fences it, he maintains. That's all on him. Mm -hmm. um, that's 
called risk transfer. So that's what he has his insurance for. So we'll. Um, so at the next meeting, we'll have a revised. We'll know from him, and then I'll have a hard. Well, number. we'll have a final hard copy of his proposal, Parker's yeah. itemized. Yeah. And then as well I with my, as I well with the local. Copy, yeah. I just didn't want to put it out in the packet because it was. So at this point, I would just say, that's fine. you know, if we give them the authorization to work with those two contractors and then get a yeah. final formal quote and then at the next meeting we can give a final motion to proceed that's fine. or accept them and move forward is yeah. that so that's fine yeah because like i said i, I have a detailed good with that mo mo i have a detailed okay. vote you guys have passed and give them the right to lock in it right yeah Does that work so, so, <clears throat> so i heard all what you said except like the last yeah, so at the next meeting, we'll, you know, provided that we have um, the final itemized quotes from both contractors. So between now and then, you and Teresa will work on finalizing those two quotes, um, get them in front of the board here, and then at the next meeting, we can, you know, make a motion to, or, or take a vote to approve or not approve to move forward on building it. So we could, does that sound right? Yeah, I just got to yeah. see some some idea so, of what he's, yeah, he's, something he's, he's yeah. holding on. I mean, yeah, it's real easy to put out a quote with no material listed. Yeah, That's I think just the fear is this that that the quote's too vague, and then we run into a well, yeah, the town was supposed to do that. You know, at least if we know now, then we we know what the final cost. I know the original letter was pretty explicit. <clears throat> okay, I'll have to go back and spend too long. Yeah. It'll be the same with. With whoever you're using, yeah, mine is, like I said, I have just, to detail uh, bid. So if there's anything that we need to do, we okay, we're providing it. trucking, then we know that, and, yeah. no. and we can put there, that in place. Are there any ground soil makeup compaction, you know, assurances you're looking for? What what would give you guys a warmer fuzzy about, you know, how the footprint is prepped for this project? I mean, they've already said that they want that we're going to dig out a few feet, and then we're, you know, we know how many we're going to dig out, and then we're going to compact it. Yeah. So. That's our impression of what sounds like the best option. Yeah. Is are you looking for anything beyond that? Um, from him. From our you folks look from up from our committee. Are you looking for additional? I think at this point. Resources beyond I, just hey, four feet of stone should do the trick. I think at this point. Besides going out and getting an engineering firm to go and spend five or ten thousand dollars to properly engineer it and then take a majority of the risk off of us, I think we've determined that we would that we would take the risk by saying, you know, we did the exploratory digging to say on average we're looking at two and a half feet of clay, and now we've taken an action plan to say that we're gonna remove that two and a half feet, so we should have four feet of new material there that typically when you're building a, a structure, you know, that you would have that to, for frost uh, reasons. So I think we've mitigated it. Yeah, mitigated some of the responsibility here. I mean, at this point, I mean, there, there's no, I mean, we live in Vermont, so it's, you know, you can get it all oh, engineered you want and it's gonna yeah, freeze and thaw a million times and it could crack. I mean, but at least this point we've, put our best foot forward. If it does crack, then, you know, it cracked. I mean, at least before, you know, if we were to build it the way it was before and just put a foot, you know, it's probably a really good, a higher percentage chance that it would have failed, right? So, is hey, we're that... We're going to go in and do some ditching, because that's the other part I do have. Do a little bit of... Keep adding have water to mitigate. Yeah, we're going to have to yeah. yeah. So, they'll be down there, so... Um, and Alan knows that we've already talked about it. Once when he was over there, I said, "Look, when we once the snow melts, we got to go over there because you've got to ditch that runoff." And he was aware of it because he'd been over and he'd been in there in the summer when they were um, doing some stuff over there because he could see the water pooling underneath the, um, the swing sets and stuff. So he was aware. And we have to move the swing sets. So that's the other thing we have to do before they can do the um, do anything is we got to get in and move the swing sets. So Alan kind of said, "Well, we can do our ditching, and move the swing sets." If, if there's any ditching, it would probably right along catching this property line uh, we may want to know that so that we can bump our footprint in board from that a little bit we, we've met the 15 foot minimum setback from the mm -hmm. property line yeah. but if you guys are ditching like yeah. right along that edge 
we may want to you know bump to 20 feet or okay. yeah we'll let you some, know because all i know what we'll do is um, we're going to walk it and, and i'll have carol come with us so it'll be carol and myself alan puppy tim and we'll walk it together like i said we got to move the swing sets anyway so we'll do it at the beginning of april and um then it'll just be on alan's work list too so which he knew it was already in a summer plan Okay. Any further discussion? Or are we good for this time? Yeah. No. No. All right. So, so you guys will get the revision, final revision of the quote. You'll get final revision of your quote. Well, I have to wait to see what he needs, right? Because yep. I mean, I have the hour to wait, but I will talk to him. But you the idea is next time we'll have. Yep. I got to know. I um, everything that we need from to Michael make Parker and to make um, the final decision and road pricing. Yep. And move forward or not with it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're not giving them authority at this point to hire him? No. Okay. For the first motion, is the phrase about the fundraising supposed to be a part of that motion? So any fundraising would repay the $7,000 first? Right. And that's part of the motion? Yeah. Okay. I've got it in there. I just want to be sure. And then you were going to do a motion to authorize trees to work with a low bidder. Did we complete that? No, we didn't. Well, yeah. Well, we have, I mean, I don't think you need yeah, a motion. No, you're not going to offer it. We're okay. just okay. fine. All right. We'll but we've authorized her. She can work with them. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk to them. All right. So we're good there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Didn't see. I'm sorry. I'm Jenny Reeves, and I'm sorry I didn't get here early enough for the public comment. But And I have a weird question. I don't know if anybody has an answer. I live on Sand Hill Road, just down from the, the town garage. And every two or three months or so, starting around midnight till two or three in the morning, there's like a fleet of giant dump trucks going up and down Sand Hill Road. I know. And it sounds like they stop close enough to maybe be the town garage, because then I can hear what sounds like a giant boulder being thrown to the back of the truck, or maybe it's they're, they're closing the back of it. It's not our town crew, I'm, I'm assuming, working yeah. at those, but it's... They've been out at 3 o'clock yeah. in the morning, and yeah. they're probably reloading sand. Yeah. Starting at midnight? Sometimes, if they, well, a couple times they, when they were, recently they were now um, cleaning Main Street. So what they would be doing is they would Bring be down here hauling material and dumping snow and stuff. So you're probably hearing the backdrop with that. Right. But hopefully we're out of snow and you know we'll be. But it goes in the summer too. I mean it's not at midnight. In the summer their hours are six to two. This is this is in the middle of the night. Okay. It starts <laughs> around midnight and goes for a couple hours, sometimes three hours. Every day. No, 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 no. Okay. It's every oh. Oh. She's saying a midnight. It, it's it's every couple of months this happens. No, but you mean the next time it happens, call the office and then I can talk to the road crew and find out if they were up there. Do okay. We because we do, do have surveillance camera? cameras yeah. up there yeah. and we haven't had any issues. So um, if you hear it again, call and tell Kelly or whoever answers the right. phone, okay. tell them and then we can check into it and see what's going on. Because it's not just like one going on, it's, it's, it's two or three. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I've got some lights and the pit on the other side. It's always weird because it's in the middle of the night. Yeah. Do you like to sleep? Shame on you. Yeah, just give a call the next day, Janine, and we'll check it out. Do you notice if, have you looked at the trucks as they come up through to see if there's a badge on the side? Yeah, they've got the window, they've got, you know, they seem to flush the lights. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of recently that they've been out doing. But of course, if you get a little bit of icing or something, they could be out sanding. But yeah, give us a call next time yeah, it happens okay. and we'll scope it out. Mm. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Thank you. All right. We will move to. So we'll move on to the draft trash ordinance. So I gave you back Mary Pavoni's comments just because uh, so we have them and then obviously we talked a little about it at town meeting and I know one of the comments that was um, put in was there talking about adding um, uh, 
uh, reasonably construed as affecting health and welfare? That was somebody's question. I mean, we didn't tell them at the meeting that it would probably was going to go similar to this um, once it got approved, but I didn't know if after town meeting and rereading Mary's um, comments, obviously she was very um, detailed, which was sweet of her, is if you had any changes that you felt that you wanted to make or clarifications, or did you feel like it's just going to want it to go as is? Well, where was Jean's comment? It was going into the enforcement? Yes, yep, that's what he had talked about was... Um, well, whereabouts his, exactly? He, he didn't really happen. say, actually. He just said, um, that was just one of the things that, uh, so I don't know, she didn't say exactly where he wanted it. Um, and her enforcement now says, town manager shall be responsible for the administration of the ordinance and shall have the authority to enforce compliance with the use of, you know, it's kind of, I, I'm not sure if, you know, that, that's where he said was under enforcement. But um, you also maybe you could put it under general requirements under mm -hmm. duty of owners and occupants. Um, yeah, I would think it wouldn't be an enforcement because it's one of the things you're requiring of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I, I so thought you, that so was. You want to include it in duty of owner. Yeah, I thought that was his comment, but maybe not. Um, no, it had to do with the town removing. Yeah, he just the, said the, reasonably the trash construed as yeah. If we so. felt it was, you know, a hazard or whatever, and he wanted right. to um, change the word. Could, as Tree said, could it just go under general requirements? Because then it would be part for for the remainder of the duties of the owner and occupant. Because there was something in there I've forgotten now about how we could do a plan. Um, that was under that's, the last. Oh, that's under enforcement. Yeah, the, la the, the last line of enforcement. Yeah, you can meet with the meet with the town manager to establish a plan. Yeah, because they did talk about that. So yeah, I wasn't sure. I think he's trying to make the point of is maybe <clears throat> was it part, you know as part of the outline that it, uh, I that he wants it to be reasonably, it has to be reasonable and be construed as affecting the health and welfare. But uh, that, I don't know, he didn't. Well, and I think in some ways, adding that portion in is actually benefits us because the whole, the whole purpose behind this, the impetus behind it has been really about the health and welfare of others. So if one yeah. neighbor is accumulating mm -hmm. trash that's affecting yeah. neighbors downstream from them, well, if you look at the last part of section two, duties of owners and occupants, B, garbage storage, the last sentence is, it is unlawful to store garbage, trash, litter, solid waste indefinitely in such a way as to attract unwanted insects, rodents, and the like that shall be harmful to neighbors or the public at large. Yeah. So uh, we could say that shall be harmful to neighbors or the public at large and may reasonably be construed as affecting health and welfare of others or something we as could impacting other property yes i think is what he said yeah as what impact that could reasonably be construed as impacting other properties health and welfare and one more time construed as impacting sorry. other properties thank you i'm sorry <coughs> <coughs> yes other. i was on the department of most primary health mm -hmm. website mm -hmm. today and there are provisions in there to take care of the town health office and to take care of that kind of stuff, which might do away with all this, and the town manager wouldn't have to try to enforce all this. I, because I'm not sure you spoke to them. Yeah, I spoke to Chris well, spoke to them here. Spoke yeah. to them Thank about you. one property. Yeah. Um, that was a it's, <clears throat> hot it's all on. That's just out. a uh, copy of you know, how it can be laid out. It is all on that website as to you know. Because he spoke. Yeah, to the yeah, Department we spoke to the Department of Health. Because um, usually, what happens a lot of times is, um, well, I would say there's a majority of cases <laughs> that health officers go to that once you do your, depending on what type of incident it is, you do your incident forms, and then you. <clears throat> A lot of times we have to put those forms on file with the state. Um, so in the meantime, when you send them to the state, you also kind of talk to them and say, this is what's going on and get their opinion on what you can do and what you can't do. Um, and we had one, we had one resident that, I don't know, it's been ongoing a couple of years, yeah. right? 
Um, and um, we've been down the road like many times on what can we do, what can we do, and pretty much, a, you know, there's nothing. You know, we've tried everything uh, other than if the garbage started to secrete liquid that flowed into the nearby stream, then then yeah, we could like act on it. started out yeah. saying it was a health problem, and then now it's turned into mm. garbage problems. So well, it's kind of all the Yeah, no, they're, they're in a tour. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, that, the health officer can go in and do an inspection of the property at the request of the landlord or the tenant, and part of that inspection, the uh, uh, yeah. dead one, is, is what's the status of trash receptacles on the property. And that's about the extent of the health offices. Yeah, well, uh, just take it apart in it. Yeah, it, it's got a big enough pile. What I was seeing or thinking, you know, I've been like places where it's got to be two years of garbage. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. I think something like this would yeah. Yeah. take care Now, of I mean, if it, it affects um, drinking water or things like that, yeah. then the health officer um, has the authority there. But there was if a couple it, of instances, yeah. well, <clears throat> you know, if someone's <clears throat> got. You know, a year's worth of trash piled on their front porch, let's say, because that seems to be, I would say, a majority of the nuisance yeah. complaints is it, it doesn't affect anybody other than that person, you know. Um, and then the health officer can't do anything about it. But yeah, it's too bad it's, because the neighbors next to it are feeling like their property is being devalued. Yeah, sure. It's calling rats and stuff, and when you clean that up, they're going to their property. You know, it's, it, it is. It's, dogs running over there every day. Yeah, it's, uh, it becomes yeah, it's, an issue for sure. It's definitely very difficult, and the thing is, is I, you know, I don't want to make fun of the state of Vermont, but as we see with anything, they're they're very quick to to put policies and procedures in effect, but then not want to help the locals out when they. I'm sure there'll be some. You know, so they 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 write a lot of um, fun literature that then then when we try to do something or force it, they'll say, well, no, it's up to you guys, or what what does your local what does your local ordinance say, or you know. And they, there was a famous one, there was a famous, uh, well, over in your neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably going to say the wrong town, but I thought it was Ferrisburg. There was this well-known one a couple of years ago with this huge trash nuisance property over there. And it went around for years. Is that what they made the paper? Yeah, they had all kinds yeah, of stuff going on seven. over there. And yeah. I mean, this thing went on for years on. <clears throat> it might be Could they do anything about the property and who was responsible for Isn't it? Isn't it right off Route 7? I know it was in Ferrisburg. I yeah, I think that's it. Um, it's right. Yeah, and they did. The guy ended up putting he, yeah, was. I don't, I don't know how it ended up, but it was. I don't know either. It went from local to state to back to local to state yeah. to, you know, back around again on something you and I would think would just be more common sense. Like, okay, we gotta take care of this thing. And, mm -hmm. um, but it was because Ferrisburg didn't have a local ordinance. Right. And then you're going off of the and they went to the state for help very then, gray yeah. state statute um so yes so i don't think i mean i just this is another reason we haven't left just because this is something that um and as you can see there's even different opinions within our own household but um i don't think anybody doesn't agree that there are properties and there will always be properties with people whose Methods of sanitation are not what we would like. Mm -hmm. However, this feels very, I wanted to, one of the reasons I'm so is because I wanted to reiterate that I don't think that you should, that, that every time there's something we don't like, putting an ordinance in because we don't have another way to deal with it is necessarily the answer. This feels very reactionary to a specific handful at most people and putting an ordinance in that then affects the whole town that, that is subjective to, because we all know the f phrase that one man's trash is another man's treasure. And I absolutely will, like believe that you guys have the best intentions and that you're not gonna come marching in and with like a dictatorship telling us what we have to not do with our property and what we can do with our property. But you can't guarantee who's going to be in power in the future and that that won't be potentially the case and every time you and i also want to say that every time you guys say well we'll go on a case-by-case -case basis and they'll work with the town manager part of me really cringes because do i believe that you will do your best with people on a case-by-case -case and say well this person's operating in this space and this person's taking advantage of course i want to believe that yeah. but you're not always going to be town manager and we've had town managers in the past because i 
I know what some of the other people here have lived here an awful long time, just like I have, and can remember town managers who picked favorites and played games, and there should be one policy for everybody. Right. And so every time you guys see somebody say, well, you'll work it out, and you know, it, no, it needs to be transparent, it needs to be one policy for everybody, and it shouldn't be, you know, we'll do it case by case. And I understand that, yes, there are people in town whose yards look like a freaking disaster. But I don't think giving a law to the entire town is the way to handle it. There's always gonna be people doing stuff we don't like. And, and I think, you know, kind of going back to town meeting day and, or before that is, you know, that's why the select board body here decided that even though we have the full authority to enact ordinances in, in the town, um, you know, we decided that we were not going to do it on our own without a majority of voters to back that. Um, just for that case in point of, well, one, I, I don't think, well, I think all of us here on the board, safe to say that None of us are here just for, you know, one agenda item. Um, so that's why we really wanted to get feedback from the town because, you know, when we have meetings, there's only three or four people that come. So we want to make sure that town meeting day, and it was good to have a discussion, and there were some pros and some cons, and there were some people in the middle that wanted to clean some language up. Um, it was good to get information back from the town's folks on what, what they would like to do because yeah. you're right, town managers change, boards change. And um, you know how how one administration perceives the whatever ordinance could be different than the next one. Um, so I guess you know that's why we went to town meeting with a non-binding resolution, um, even though we didn't have to. Um, and I think at this point the the town's folks, well, a large majority of the town's folks had voted for it, and now it's kind of a moving the ordinance forward. You know, and I know in the short term, you know, I wouldn't say it's well, in some ways, in the short term, there are certain properties that we know it's, in a way, kind of picking on, hey, we got to get this cleaned up. And I know Therese, in the short term, is going to do her best to work with those folks to um, to meet the ordinance and work with them maybe on a, uh, a time frame to do it and, and cost, you know, how we can do it cost effectively. But at the same time, the, the ordinance being in will be, in some cases, proactive so that hopefully we don't have other properties that get to that level. Um, and we do have two of those properties like we talked mm -hmm. about that are tax sale properties that we can't sell. Um, so that's affecting everybody because those are individuals that are not, at this time, that are not contributing to tax space. That means that you and I and everybody else here has to contribute to make up for that. So I mean, it's. I also do think we tried to make it as specific as we could, I mean, without being right. completely overburdened. And, and, and again, it, and, and that's why the, the ordinance went back to, you know, I, I call it trash, but I mean, you know, what you typically would put in a trash bag that would, you know, that you would discard at different times. You know, this is really the nuisance that we're having. It's not, you know, um, in some cases, you know, someone's, um, art or you know collectibles or you know things like you know different objects that people might have at their home that um, um, that's why we kind of went more to what are things that are more of a noose more of a could attract animals um, maybe an extreme and be harmful for people you know um, type more trash specific things <laughs> maybe people would say Old cars or something like that. You're yeah. Like specifically thinking like little clutter, yeah. trash bags and things like that. But it needs to be enshrined in the language because, and the same with when you talk about it might attract rodents or animals, and I don't remember the exact um, name of this, but I know that there were comments at town meeting which are very valid of some people don't mind having raccoons in their yard, some people do. And mm -hmm. as long as there's wiggle room, it can be. Abused, and that—that that will always be my concern. Is that when things are not laid out in concrete, if you, and and trash is a very yeah, some people's compost is other people's. Trash. And we definitely are trying to find, and also don't let us not forget, there's a very specific state statute now about compost and all that yeah. sort of thing too. So, yep. but um, well, I wonder about section two B at the end where it says. Um, 
solid waste indefinitely in such a way as to attract unwanted insects, rodents, and the like, we could say that shall be reasonably construed as affecting the health and welfare mm -hmm. and impacting other properties instead of shall be harmful to neighbors or the public large. I mean, if that's the yeah, language. Change that language. Is that, if that's it's a possibility, I mean, it's just a suggestion. If that's, if you want to insert Jean's language in there, if you don't and you feel like you have it covered, um, that shall be harmful to neighbors or the public at large, then we can leave it. No, oh, I thought Jean made some pretty good points. I thought that yeah. was a good point. I mean, what I can do is, and I also thought that Mary made some good points. Yeah, there were, there are yeah. definitely a couple of Marys that I think we should. That, so what we could do is I could kick it back to Dietry and um, take, you know, and, and she, she has some, some of D Mary's points I think are good because she definitely is trying to make it more specific mm -hmm. by cleaning up some yeah. vagaries in the language. So, um, well, what about, um, what about having Dietry take some of the comments from Jean? Yeah, well, that's the only one I know about Jean. Incorporate, yeah, one one incorporate one. some of Mary's. Yeah. feedback here yeah. and then see what that looks what like that, that looks like and you know then we can review because yeah. I do, do that think, language because yeah. I think you know Mary she definitely took some definitely I, I think on an ordinance end of things she cleaned up a lot of oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah she a lot of a lot of the language yeah. um she did yeah. I think it behooves us to with definitions thoroughly and, look through her that's what I wanted because I had yeah. sent them to you before and then mm -hmm. we, once with yeah. them we obviously were waiting for town meeting so that was the only comment I took from Jean um no, it's everybody else. I mean, a lot of feedback was they didn't think we went far enough, mm -hmm. um, no, which I was didn't. interesting. We went far enough. Yeah, but, yeah I uh, well, we cut so much of it out oh, because we, really we cut out all the car stuff. Yeah. And then I did, um, you know, Mo had talked about it, and then I did meet with a resident after <clears> town <throat> meeting on um, the other day because they have a lot of cars, and I did tell them, look, you know, just so you know, I printed out the twenty-seven pages and said you're in violation of the state law. So here's the deal, and so you can sort this out and figure out how you're going to come into compliance. I said, I'm not touching it right now, but that doesn't mean the state won't, because our ordinance doesn't, but the state can, and you are in violation. So it was good nature. We had a good visit, and he took the 27-page uh, thing, and I said, I'll give you guys contact information if you want to meet. He'll probably come down and talk to you and tell you what's what. So, um, so that was helpful. So he, he was very nice. And, it was um, also, you know, so I think it would be helpful to kind of have Dietrich yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. put that together sure. okay. um, so that we can see what that would be. But at the same time, is we'll have to rebrush back up on, because I think now we're going to have to have an informational meeting. Well, you will anyways. Yeah, the right? whole, and that's, yeah. Before I'll, we can even move forward with the ordinance, we'll have a, to have another there is, informational and, night. And then we have to make, you know, enact, you know, yeah. within 30 days or, there's a whole, or 10 days of that. There's meeting, a whole right? specific or, thing on, on right. it, and you have to, um, obviously, it has to go into the newspaper. And I we have to warn it for 30 days, and then we have to have it within what, you 10 have to or 14 arrange days for of the meeting that we One form of publication, um, and then, yeah, and then people, in, and um, in, within 14 days following its adoption, and there's a whole process, but I think that's too soon because we're not ready to do that yet. I think that once you guys, we, you'll see it again next time, mm -hmm. and even if you approve it then, we'll put it on the following agenda for you to kind of get that final once over of it. Um, so I think, yes, I know I'm aware of the specific statute and the laws to do it, but I think we're a little early yet to do it. So at the next meeting, can we like, have, you can we have a little typed up roadmap of, yeah, sure, absolutely. you know, maybe like this date is when we would how you do it, sure. Yeah. Because I think if you get yeah. it, so that we can time. see it to see where the final, yeah. you know, Absolutely. would this be something that we would have all set by yeah. whatever July first? Exactly. Yeah, no, I'm happy with it because this way you'll see it how, next time. You'll still see it in draft next time mm -hmm. to make sure you're okay with that, and then there's no more tweaks. And mm -hmm. so yeah, no, I'm happy to set. I'll put a roadmap in there. Right. Yeah. Now, mind how it works. No question on that thing. Will that kind of roadmap or whatever? Obviously, because. Some people were trying to like follow this and, and make sure that ahead of time that we're like at that informational meeting or if there's updated versions we have trying to read it ahead of time and so stuff. Is that going to be somewhere online where the general public can kind of keep track or is that something you can put on the website or something? Well, so the draft policy is on the website currently. And when right, we you're already new, talking about tweaking it. And so. when we make a new draft, yeah, I'll we'll have Kelly it. put it back on the website again okay. so that way. Um, when, when Dietrich gets it pulled back together, we'll put it again on the website. And then the packets are always on the website too, right. so we can download all that information. And 
Um, when they see it again next week, it'll say exact same thing probably, or in two weeks, it'll just say draft trash ordinance, continue discussion only, just so that they can see it with Mary's tweaks and can go through and see if they have a feel for it and changes. And So when we, when we receive this for the next meeting, the updated draft will be on the website. Yep, that yep, that's I think it was your question, right? Yeah, that's what we usually do is put it out. That way people okay. can, probably because we're looking for comments. That way if anybody like wants to attend the next meeting, they'll have the updated yep. ordinance the same on there. that we yeah. have. Okay. That's if Deidre gets it done in that time frame. So I'll, I'll see if she has okay. time in the next two weeks to get that done. So, mm -hmm. um, notice we'll get approved. So do we have anything further in regards to the trash ordinance? <clears throat> yeah, if she can't get it done by the 23rd. I mean, if she can't do it, then we'll just move it to the next one. Yeah. But, I mean, ideally, if we can make the edits by then. Yeah, 320. She's just got the grant. Yeah, she's getting that wrapping that up. And yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to be gone. So if she has questions, she's going to have to wait for me. And so okay. we'll see. But we'll put it on there. All right. But yeah, Mary's definitely took a lot of time. That was oh, yeah. really No, great. no, I think we definitely yeah, did a lot of... I think so, yeah. yeah she, she did great. A lot of I would say a majority of Yeah, she yeah. did a terrific yeah. job. That needed to be together. Mm -hmm. I think so. It was but great. I found it helpful just because I feel like we've read it so many times at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And rereading it through her I Mary's was like, oh, yep, mm -hmm. it's a good point. <laughs> like, it yeah, just mm -hmm. connected some pieces that I... I think so, too. Yeah, it's always <clears> helpful <throat> to get other people's take on it. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll move on. We have um, some first and third class liquor licenses and outside consumption permit for Babe's Bar. So I did put a little blurb in there just because I'm not sure what you know about your authority to, you know, because you are the local liquor control board. I know where I came from, we have had to adjust hours because of complaints. And we certainly haven't had a single complaint mm -hmm. about babes, but just wanted you to know that you have the ability to chat about that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what you knew. Uh, and, there are very few residents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We had a lot of residents on Main Street and somebody installed when they remodeled, put a garage door. So like they had a band and had that door open. Let me just tell you how many people called the next day. <laughs> and I got it because it was hotter than Hades in there, but, um, but there was some unhappy residents. So we had to say garage door closed and these can talk about the hours. So. We were always told that they couldn't have any music outside. Yeah, you either. can. Um, oh, right there. Permit, right? You have to... You probably... Yeah, yeah. Because so you don't like have... Like, not even voice. have jukebox speakers out on that deck. Right. You know, to have music outside. Mm -hmm. Well, I think yeah, there is... have a conditional that. permit. Because I know, like, we did that with Tessie's when they wanted to do some sort of event. There was... Out by the fire pit. Yeah, yeah. an event. Mm -hmm. You know, we did a conditional permit to allow them noise beyond a certain time. And I think right. They'd have, they'd have to do that. And, and if it was a yeah, nightly thing, then... That's established by the DRB, I yeah. think, some of those conditions. Yeah, and they would have to have like an event <clears throat> permit that I think you right. guys could sign off on with the DLC and stuff. But because the state, if you don't have a, I don't believe Bethel has a noise ordinance, the state has yeah. a vague uh, noise in the nighttime, which mm -hmm. is kind of like basically kind of rule of thumb is 10 o'clock, um, then it's done. You got to be quiet. Yeah. So they probably could have music out there that wasn't really loud if they wanted to have the stick or something but um, it could be in there um, you know an approval if they wanted to have a music out there until the times but yeah you're right if you were gonna do like a bigger thing almost like a festival permit so but yeah you're, you're lucky because you don't it doesn't have a lot of neighbors and certainly ever complain about it. does anybody have any concerns about the first third class permit our licenses or the outside consumption permit for what are the hours on the base? outside consumption for curious. Well, I didn't. I was looking and I. What was your question? And I thought outside looking consumption for hours. hours. I thought outside consumption permits was actually requested and granted for a specific. It and is. It should date. say the hours on there. Do you have a that? date also? I oh, let me see. I don't know see if it has the hours. I was looking. I, keep, I, don't, know, I don't know. They used to. I was I was reading through it because that was what had stuck out yeah. was yeah. if you're going to have a outside consumption permit, what is there an hour? Yeah. So, yeah. This but this I, particular it is said hours on there. It doesn't say the venue day. has outdoor consumption year round potentially, yeah. but and it's fenced in. It's, it's fenced in. Yeah. So right. they, also, year -round. they also they're going to have a, a 
party so have the outside one. in about a week or two mm-hmm. for the BU. Yeah, why don't you yeah. look at that? And Ford Fest, and that comes to the front. But right the BU, the BU one will not be outside. So your outside so consumption the Ford Fest one was, but they got the permitting and everything. It the says one coming up is not outside. That's not going to be outside. Here it says 58 feet by 16.5 feet area attached to west side of building areas mm-hmm. enclosed by fencing, mm-hmm. including fencing porch area. So 12 p.m. Mm-hmm. to 12 a.m. is the permanent use. So it is year round. Sometimes you will see them. You're right where it's just during certain. Um, so that's 12 a. So they're saying year round that from 12 in the afternoon until 12 at night. That's what they're applying for. But you're right. Sometimes it might say. You know, if they have it on a porch, obviously they're mm-hmm. not going to be out there in the winter time. But that's where it is, um, right here. Okay. And that's all monitored by DLC. They'll send somebody in to make sure they're not serving drinks outside of that fenced in area that it's appropriately fenced in, and and all those sorts of things. So you're lucky you don't have any on your sidewalk, which I used to in another town. So then it's then you had to have it all, you know, roped off, and DLC mm-hmm. would come by and check. You had to make sure you had enough room on the side to get strollers and handicap access by. It was Brandy kind of a pain. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they do mm-hmm. exactly. It's kind of a pain, but I mean more for DLC than us. Mm-hmm. But you want to make sure they're not encroaching out onto the sidewalk so you can get pedestrian it's safety. It's more of a by. question than the, yeah. than the causing problem. Just want to make sure that by so the west side of the building is a. Train track side. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> because when you guys, when they did the one for Forward Fest, it was in the parking lot, but they got roped off the whole. They roped, and they had a specific permit right. for the a special right. event right. permit. Yeah. Right. One entrance in and yep. monitored exactly. people at the entrance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, any concerns with any of these three? Right here. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, make a motion and approve it. I'll make a motion we approve the, the three liquor licenses for. First class, was it first class? First, third, third class. First, and third, and outside, outside consumption. consumption. The Babe Spar. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Just make sure you sign it as approved. <laughs> <laughs> all. I don't know. Some, oh, yeah. of, some of us have uh, gone. Am I back. ever going to hear the end of that? Thing? Never. No, okay. Not until the next person does. Yeah, uh, well, you got three years to Now you need a, a three junior, more years a junior to member to come on into that. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and some of these other ones here, where we're signing that, <clears throat> we can buzz through some of these. Um, the next uh, item is the annual financial plan for the town highways, which is basically just showing the state funding formula of our class one, two, and three highways. I did put the comments at the bottom that it doesn't include that, you know, capital road, capital equipment, and the ERAP. So, no. because I think that was the best way to do it. And we don't have any specific major construction projects coming up that we're doing that were, um, that I could talk about. That's how I came up with the number. Okay. I'm not sure how well they even look at these things, frankly. But the state? Yeah. I don't think. I mean, I Other than they it put it in a binder, I don't think <laughs> yeah. they put much of it. It goes more on a shelf. So. so we all have to sign that. So I just uh, entertain a motion to approve the annual financial plan for town highways. So who? Do you have the, you have a certain sign. one to sign or is it? Sure. Right? All in favor? Aye. 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 Who seconded that? Oh, I do. Okay. On this next item, was there anything included in the packet on the certification of compliance? Did you just get this? It should just be a one oh, it's, okay. sheet like Good. that. And I just wanted to make sure it wasn't yep. more than that. Mm-hmm. No, a lot of these are just... Um, just a formality. Yeah, annual. 
Finishing up signing the liquor licenses. Uh, move forward to the certification of compliance at town road and bridge standards. So just so you know, I did I asked Rita, I was like, I'm not sure to check this box. And she said, check that you do not have up to date highway nine, but I'm working with two rivers to complete in 2020. So I just hand wrote it in on mine because so we do not have an up to date highway, highway network, network inventory, which you and I both know. But um, so there, and I knew we, I emailed it because I felt like we had applied for a grant or something a while ago. So um, I just checked and do not, but this is what we're doing. So. Okay. So we'll just need a motion to approve. <coughs> make a motion to approve the certificate of compliance. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. <laughs> And then from the notes that we had in the packet, the um, <coughs> capital are the, um, sorry, the equipment committee had their first meeting. Yeah, that went great. We actually had, Mo was the board liaison. He was there. We had um, Bill Brainerd, always a handful, but good luck knowledge there. Um, Jeff Gilman, Ryan Slack, uh, Alan, and AJ from the road crew. So it was good. We had... Um, all the information I had handed out to the members already that talked about um, the we had the oil test done so for the Raiders so they could figure out everything that was wrong with the Raider. Um, Alan and AJ had gone through the other pieces of equipment and trucks and made a list of what um, repairs that needed to be made and um, you know talked about that. So it was actually good because part of the problem that we all know that we have is the fact that somebody brought bought two trucks at one time which is a killer because you really want them on an eight-year rotation mm -hmm. so um it was nice to to have an opinion and and to talk a little bit about what you wanted and aj had said you know again a 10 wheeler and, and jeff was like why why don't you want a six wheeler four-wheel drive and this and that and they went back and forth so it was kind of nice to have people being able to talk um intelligently about what they had what they needed so um so i felt like it went really well did you yeah I did. yeah, yeah and, and we went up to the garage afterwards and uh, they were pointing out what needed to be fixed and there was a lot of comments on how to do it you know in-house yeah. so. i think that was good too yeah so we ended up um it came out with and i'll type up the minutes or the notes for your next um, packet that basically they agreed that we should spend up to about 20000 Some of it, AJ had said, could be done in-house. Right. But to basically want a little wiggle room in case when Nortrax got a hold of it, there was something else. So basically dump twenty grand into the grader so that we can keep it for a few years. Because right now, a replacement grader is 400 and some odd, 405. 405, And it was right. like crazy because I had 295. Mine, obviously, when we replace the grader, we'll be replacing it with something most likely that's used. You know, new, new equipment isn't... Not like that isn't going to be in their future for a little bit. Not There's that price. Allow us like 175 for the old one. So yeah, no, only 75. Only 75. Only right. 75,000. Yeah. And they were like, no way. So plus two of the new graders have new emissions, and and right. that's you know they're saying, look, if you can keep <clears throat> yours, dump some money. the brakes on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. So the other thing is that they did agree was that they need to take a look at both of the freight liners and. Have somebody come down, go through the freight liners, keep the one that's the best, take as much as you can off the other to put on that one, and then get rid of that one. And so what, what they had suggested was, because Ryan said, you know, the last bid you got was a whole package. He said, do the 
right. put out an RFP for cabin chassis, then you can get the packet, you know, another price for the um, plow equipment and, and that. So we, that was good. He was going to get us, um, <clears throat> give me a copy of an RFP. Well, don't they, just, the state pricing don't they just piggyback on the state pricing anyways for cabin chassis and stuff? It depends what you're bidding. If you're bidding, you know, right now they probably, they may only have something for international. So if you wanted something mm-hmm. else, you know, that would be, <clears throat> but they did agree to the 10 wheeler once AJ made yep. his case as to why and they were like, okay. And so, um, so that's what we're going to do is have someone come down and that was the, the comment of the, the the equipment committee to go through the two freight liners to figure out exactly which one is in the better shape. There was also a big list of other things, and some of it they felt was regular maintenance. And I said, look, you know, they only have a fifty thousand dollar budget, so for repairs and maintenance. So um, with some of the things that they'd had to tackle, um, but they also had some great contacts. Um, the Kubota, which we use for sidewalks, is doing the job. The bottom, you know, it's got a ton of rust because someone stored it in or near the salt shed. So, um, but they gave us a name for a welder. So I gave, got that number and gave it to Alan to say, hey, get the guy up here to see if he can take a peek out this summer. Can he weld in a new flooring? And, you know, the motor itself was in great shape. So they said, well, fix it up and let's patch it up. And, you know, we haven't been able to get rid of the vent tracks. I have had that out. We have one guy, I'm gonna reach out to him. Someone mentioned something about what BTC or something was. And there, right? yeah, they, they talked about in-house finally <clears throat> got back to me and said, uh, it's not big enough for what they need. Mm. So um, we did have one guy who, um, when we were looking around like pricing and stuff, he had said, if you can't get rid of it, give me a call, I might be interested in buying it. So we'll have to reach out to him because without that, there's the sale of that means there's no purchase of a zero turn. So you can't have one with, I need to sell the Ventrax, that's going to fund the zero turn. So if there's no sale of Ventrax, there's no zero turn, Richard will have to do it with this Ventrax. Um, so the, so the Kubota came out of it to get some, to get some work done and, um, but they did, they had some names like, Hey, get this guy to come up here. He can redo this. And some of it, they felt that was really just, um, you know, it doesn't mean you need a piece of equipment. It was just repairs. So, um, what it looks like. Those repairs beyond what we approved the list that we had several months ago that we approved some additional Mm -hmm. funds for. Yep. Yep. This is that. So what, what it's going to boil down to in the end is. We are going to get things repaired, and we are going to probably end up with a nice down payment for the ten wheeler. But we will not be able to fund it fully. Not with the um, not once we dump twenty grand in here and get some of the other stuff done. But until we have pricing <clears throat> for that and see what the budget looks like, um, I'm not going to request any other money out of the out of the capital equipment fund. So I guess the question that I had looking through that is, so if we put, if we put 20000 into the grader to get another couple of years out of it. We should get more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, because I know at this point the idea is to, <clears throat> to prolong the purchase of the grader so that we can purchase one of the trucks, trucks now mm-hmm. and get ourselves better, I don't know if we'll actually get on an eight year cycle, but get us Probably better not. on a cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's four or six or something. Well, they were, they're hoping, they were saying, mm, you know, right now, obviously you're trudging a year. So you're, we're never going to put eight years between those two trucks. Not now, maybe in a couple of cycles, but not in so one shot. So if we shot. put 20 grand into the grader this year. We're also. Because if I remember right, we're supposed to purchase a truck this year, right? Yeah, but we're not, not for the price tag that's going to come with it and not for by the time we get some of the other repairs made that we may have to come back to make requests. So we'll be looking at doing a truck next year? No, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do a truck this year. On the trucks? Yeah, we're going to try to get another two years out of one truck. Between. Between. No. If we trade one this year. Right. The other one would come up next year. We're going to try to push that back another year. No, so my question, yeah, so... Mm -hmm. We're going to put 20 grand into the grader, and we are going to move forward with purchasing one of the trucks this one year. One of the, yeah. yeah. And then try to push the other truck back a couple of years so right. that we can get yeah. some sort of gap there. Yeah. Um, There'll okay. be more repairs probably, but. Yeah. But, you know, that's why they, yeah. Grand, so, how does the math work if we, if we take 20,000 out of the equipment fund? Mm-hmm. So, if we put 20 out of that, and then we will, if we do purchase the truck this year, we will start to make payments on a new truck. Well, that's why I don't know the whole, that? I can't tell you yet because like, what we need to hear from is we need a couple <clears> things. <throat> we need 
someone who's going to go through both of the freight liners to see which one is to see what sort of a trade price we're going to have. Also, the price that I thought we were looking at is going to be a little bit higher, I think, for purchase price than we did. Although that's kind of out yet because the price Brian was saying he felt we had too high of a price because Alan bid it as a package. Right. Where if we go with a cabin chassis, and I have not had a chance yet to look at what the state pricing is. So my guesstimate, doing the quick and dirty math after that meeting, was we would have a down payment. Maybe if we get good news on when somebody goes through both trucks, it won't be that. And also to see what we're going to do with the other one as far as, um, you know, they were talking about trading it. I prefer we don't trade it. I'd rather sell it because I think we'll do better with an outright sale than a trade. But I think we're too soon to tell. But my guess is, Chris, if I didn't tell you right now, I'd guess that... We're going to have to make some sort of loan payment. I'm, we're going to try hard not to, but we've already, you know, he's already gone through his budget right now yeah. for um, repairs already this year. The way Ryan was talking in, and Jeff and Bill both was, if, if we just bought the chassis outright and then had it subbed out for the for the body and the plows and everything, well, the plows we've already got, but mm -hmm. for the body, uh, there would be quite a difference in on what the dealer sells the body for than what we can actually put a bid up and get for. Because mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it looks like in the past, <clears throat> you know, payments anyways, like, like of course, how much the truck is, how much we get for trade, or if we sell outright, what that balance is. But, you know, the, the last international, the last international there was around 27,000 a year is what we were making payments on, right? right. That was Alan's truck, right? right. That was a single axle, that was right. Yeah. So we're... So, so I'm just trying to put my head around it. If we have 110,000 in our highway equipment trust fund, mm -hmm. and you just if we take 20, now we're down to 90, how much will, you know, uh, 20 cents? I mean, is are we talking that one truck's going to be in the, you know... Forty to fifty thousand a year pay payment. Area. I don't know. I can't tell you. And I know what I have. I and then if so, obviously that puts some keeps a balance. But then t two years down the road, we're going to have another one in there. Exactly. So then you're going to have two payments. So it sounds like at that point you're going to be right up against the wall on one ten. And we this also, is and this is what we're talking about, Chris. Is we're talking. That's exactly right. what we're trying to I'm get. Just trying to, I'm just trying to wrap my head around. We're trying. You know, we would like to not make a loan payment, but we haven't seen the numbers yet. He, Brian, felt that our that Brian right. that Alan's price last year was too high, but I don't know yet. And right. um, so my best case scenario is we buy one outright, and then in two three years we buy something else. But these guys are saying they may not get new in three years. They might get a used vehicle. So these guys are saying, this is what the equipment committee is saying, we gotta look at this because sometimes you have the opportunity to pick up a vehicle that somebody has kept and maintained, had all the records on, and that might be what we need for a little bit. So they realize that because they're also taxpayers and they also realize they're gonna be looking at a new town garage cost as well. So I think that we need to meet again. This was just our first mm -hmm. meeting and let's get some more information. But look, I know. It would be budget, nice to see the, the budget, updated. And, matrix of it will be you know if we I purchase a truck this year whatever a truck two years from now and then a greater i don't know say four years from now yeah, yeah. and how does that work with our funding schedule exactly. you know do we have to look at putting a little bit more into that or how is that going to affect the 110 well, that's right we now talk, well we talked about that because that's um, what we said is at this rate there's no we're going to have to increase that 110 because we're not going to make it but we all, I also don't want to put together any numbers yet because I don't really have real numbers to base it on. I kind of I would like to look at the state um, contract and see what we're looking at for pricing, and I also don't know if that's um, you know the whole ten wheeler versus well they they definitely agreed with the ten wheeler but not I don't think the belly blade. So do no, we hit the wooden for the belly No, because that was like another thirty to forty thousand. I mean, do we have time to to get the more information on? how the, um, the long-term capital plan, equipment plan looks yeah. before we make a decision on the, putting the 20,000 into the grader, or is the grader something that needs a firm decision tonight, or is it, you know? I feel like the grader is something that needs a firm decision. It needs work, and they, and the only, and they're hoping it doesn't go to 20, but 
it, it, do, it has to be done in order to keep it. Otherwise, um, we're going to be, um, you know, look, worst case scenario, we have to put off a truck another year. And now, they have to make do with what they have. The Garth and track originally said around 18 grand. So mm -hmm. We're just saying 20, just because he's probably going to find something when he gets into it. And Alan also, or AJ felt there was some of it they could do there. But I don't feel like, I feel like, yes, we need to move forward with the greater mm -hmm. and we will problem solve the truck. They know, do, they know exactly, I laid out exactly how much money they had. And do we know how much, um, because we increased the you know, repairs item for to our equipment to 56 this year. Yeah. So do we know of the past year or two how much on average we do put into the grader? Like, I'm just going to make it up. If every year we put $4,000 into the grader, you know, so if we put 20 into it this year, mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's four that we won't have to use under that item. So, do we really have to borrow twenty from the well, we twenty have from to, the capital fund? Do we really only need to borrow sixteen or something like that? We have to do it now because the, his budget is overspent. Uh, he doesn't have um, he doesn't have any more um, money in his regular operating budget before June thirtieth to foot the bill. So, it has to come out of the capital equipment fund. And I understand what, exactly what you're saying. Um, I'm hoping that with this, he can pick up some other repairs, you know, anything he has. And he's put more money than 4000 into the greater this year. And um, I understand your concern, hence why we have an equipment committee to kind of... Well, I'm just saying... And they knew what we have for money, and, but we If we put that money into it now, then... They're saying they One don't. would assume that we won't have to spend 56000 on... The normal budget, you know, right? That that's, budget would be less. Up, that's our hope, but you know, the problem is that because of the freight liners, they put a lot of money into those, and they also have, um, you know, they're going to have the Nortrax or the Kubota fixed because it's so rusted out. There was only a couple of pieces of equipment that actually didn't have current issues, um, and some of it is great. Like they needed some um, work Just, done on the dump bed. Some of it was they needed the greater pins or the. Um, bucket pins redone, but they felt like the money to be done to the grader is something that needed to happen because they've had some breakdowns recently mm -hmm. with it and, and they feel like they just need to take care of that in order to keep it in. If they want to keep it for another four or five years, they want to put the money into it to get it taken care of now. The only thing we haven't done is, is to come up with a figure to keep one of the freight runners on the road for two more years. We got somebody coming in to go, you know, evaluate them both and, and make suggestions about that. Right. You know, that could be some more money down the yeah. road that we don't Because, know. and the prices too, I only had two something in there for a greater. The greater price was 425000 mm -hmm. for a new one. And I was like, so oh, all depends on what you need on it. Well, more exactly. More. I mean, so I like, had just pulled up a number. Yeah, that's, like you need all the GPS, you know, all the I know. GPS and, grading stuff. Cause we and that was a quote that. that we got. We received the quote of the 425000 We're like, oh my God. But obviously, you know, they're not going to spend that much, but they were saying, well, the new Because I always laugh at like the state, you'll see them <clears> have <throat> a brand new, brand new grader with all, all GPS equipment on it, and they never use it. All they do is push snowbanks back. You yeah. Know, it's like, you awesome. don't need all that equipment to push snowbanks back. Exactly. Well, Orange said a grader they got down here that has been around for 12, yeah. over 12 years. Yeah. But they don't use theirs <laughs> as often, but that was part of it is let's get it maintained so that we can hold it because they knew that was our biggest expense and they felt like, Look, let's extend the life of the greater by several years as long as we can. And by I think they were looking probably three to five was their hope. Mm -hmm. And then let's focus on the trucks since that's a bigger deal. And then they were talking about the one ton because yeah. they know it's been well. Done. So we've gone back and forth. But <clears throat> I don't I don't feel like I can give you a capital equipment plan because I'm waiting on numbers for them to come back a freight liner. But um, the committee definitely felt like they needed to move forward with the greater repairs, as do AJ and Alan, because of the issues that they've had, so. Yeah. Yes. So just one question and maybe some food for thought. Um, what's broken on the greater? Is it mostly mechanical stuff, or is it like the blades busted? Well, what's the story? It's mechanical. It's, mechanical. There's a whole, um, I don't have it with me because it went to the equipment committee, but there's a big list. There was some rings that needed to be done. There was, you know, a lot. They had, we had had um, paid to have the oil sampled so that they could see if there was any um, the different metal, whatever was in the oil. And okay. so there was um, an extensive list. Some of it the road crew may try to take on themselves. But. And then you said you had some dump bodies and things that weren't doing so good? 
Um, right, they've had, yeah, they have several issues. So there are a few different ways that you can extend the life on dump bodies. Yep, and that's what they talked to AJ and Alan about, a couple of the guys. With hard facing and using some different um, higher Bernal materials. So when you're dropping stone in them, they flex and they don't crack yeah. um, and things of that nature. And if you want some more information on that, I can help with that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you get the information to Therese and she can share it. I can share it to the equipment committee. Or yeah. Mo, and they can yeah. share it to the equipment committee. Absolutely. And, that, and that's yeah. kind of like, you know, why Therese put, to get, put together this equipment committee is really, you know, the way we've always done things is, you know, between the town manager and the road foreman, they mm -hmm. figure out a way to keep things on the street, right? And, and you know, we didn't take advantage of some of the local resources that we have of, you know, yeah. we have, we have um, you know, state maintenance you know, workers that live in our town. We also have, you know, several contractors that, you know, obviously live in our town. And it's nice yeah. to be able to pool together, get yeah. get them to look at and say, if this was their business, what would they be doing with their equipment? You know, how would they be servicing it or how long would they be keeping it? And I thought some of the <clears throat> biggest stuff that honestly that came out of it that was great was just them giving them resources saying, oh, don't go there to get it fixed. They're gonna charge, go to this guy. He knows what he's doing. He'll come in, he'll take care of you. And so a lot of it was really, was good that way. And, and I thought Jeff uh, Gilman in a couple of times was like, look, you know, psh, that's just regular maintenance. You're sweating the small stuff. That's just, so it was good. They actually, um, and because too, they're, they're residents, which is nice too. So that they're saying, yeah, look, no, we're not doing that. You're not getting a new grader. And, one of them even said, you guys better get used to used equipment because this budget and this money and the town garage coming, you know. So other so other than like purchasing guidelines, you know, for equipment, mm -hmm. is the equipment committee also talking about what the um, public works personnel should be doing for routine maintenance to those pieces? I think they will. We didn't, really we, didn't work on we didn't get into it. We kind of just, this was our first meeting, so we broached the subject of this is what we have, this is what we need to do, and um, they were, I'm going to draft the RFP, uh, Ryan was going to get me one that the state used, and they're all going to review the RFP before it goes out. They want to see, they're going to be definitely part of the bidding process and reviewing the bids and looking at equipment. And, and I do think, yes, that I do think they'll be making Because it would be nice to have a, you know, a yearly schedule of these are the pieces of equipment, this is what we should be doing. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then, oh, by the way, so then you can start saying, you know, this piece of equipment costs you X amount of dollars to do your services on. Oh, and you know what? I found out, too, they have software that they can be tracking that with, and they haven't been, which I didn't right. realize. So, but the so, equipment committee, I'll talk about um, maintenance. Because, you know, we, you know, talked about the, the equipment that was purchased for the... Um, Transfer station. Transfer station, you know, yeah. recently, and you know that none of that since it's been there got any maintenance. So now it's you know basically yeah. you know dinosaur equipment because nobody right. took advantage. You know, and where now that we have that equipment committee, maybe they could be saying, yeah, you know, on your downtime, this is the this is the service you should be doing. Whatever. I know thirty years. Weekly, ago. yearly. Oh, look at that! Yeah. This is they might actually have whatever. a schedule. Thirty years ago, they used to have a, a, a log of what they yeah. what they did the hours. Right. You know, I don't know if they've got that up yeah, there. Kind of like, you know, you have your car, and every yeah. time you go in, they say, well, your 50000 you know, yeah. service services do. And I'll see if Ryan has um, one. And this is what you should do, and so much it costs. That's why I was just thinking. I'm sure it's established. You know, well, not up I mean, there. No, one would think. Maybe not. One would think. <laughs> not there, but we'll see what they have. But the other good thing yeah, is, like, they had, a, they had fixed yeah. one of their seats yeah. with duct tape and some sponges. And they actually, we, out of that, we got a but it also will repair a seat because they priced a new seat. It was ridiculously right. expensive. They're like, we're not buying that. And they, they're like, oh, we know somebody who redoes one. So here, you know. But if they also have some sort of maintenance schedule. Yeah, I'll ask the, state, the state must. It, so. it gives you that fill in whatever. Yes. You need something to do next Wednesday because whatever, yeah. then you know, I, they, got, yeah. they could be doing a service on a certain piece of equipment. I'm sure that, yeah, I'll ask the state, I'll ask Ryan, they might, because he was the one who um, had given us. So when it comes questions. to the 20000 that's something that needs to be decided tonight? That was our feeling, was that, that was they, feeling, yeah. yeah, they wanted it done, and I was, um, because it's they... It's going to go to work soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be busy. And, yeah. and yeah. They, Well, I agree, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. we're going to be, well, we're already starting to fight muddy roads, yeah. right? Yeah. And when this was one of the things we said to him, too, or I said, was, look, okay, we're going to spend 20, that's just less money. <laughs> we're like, okay, but they actually were really good about, for the challenge, and I thought that some, a lot of what came out of it was finding 
other ways for um, to have some equipment fixed that wasn't as expensive as maybe some of the places that they've gone before, which was like, oh no, you should use so and so. And I thought that was very helpful. Yep. So, um, so no, they were good, and they also were tight fisted. They, so they were, were really, which is great. They're like, yeah, uh, no, you're not getting that. We're residents. Forget it. Forget <laughs> about it. You're not getting it. So, which was good. It was nice, and they were helpful. So. So I would, I would entertain a motion um, to allocate twenty thousand dollars up to twenty thousand um, dollars to come out of the capital highway equipment fund to be used towards repairing the current grader. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I do think that. I think it's going to be one of those short term wise. It's going to cost us. Some money, but long term wise, long -term having a few more years, having that group of people together is going to be cost effective. Yeah. Uh, I think so too. Yeah. yeah, they were, and they were pretty funny too. They were um, a couple times putting them through the paces. Saying, Two of them um, said, "What would we ever get rid of that cat grader for? Yeah, should, that should still be on the road." Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they get it, and they also understood. They said, "We don't want to upgrade yeah. right now because of all the emissions." And they just said, "Listen, you don't need it's the brutal. fancy hand controls. You'll make it." And uh, so they were pretty good. And uh, but I thought it was good, and they were. Um, it was respectful, but it worked out, and and um, they had really the, good contacts. The, the new emissions pieces are dreadful. Yeah. It's. Um, I know at work, probably 80% of our downtime when it comes to equipment is, is due to the new emissions controls. And it's just, yeah. you know, you know, something happens in the emissions control and it shuts the whole truck down. Mm -hmm. And then the truck's down for a day while they come and reset it and do it again. And it's That's one of the things, even the actual, the salesman actually yeah. said, and have the if you can hold yours, he's like hang on to it, put some money into it's it because challenging. he said the minute you go to that it's going to be a lot of money and hard to deal with. So. Yeah, it is. And we did also talk a little bit about the one time, so which was <laughs> kind of funny. So they're, you know, they're like, okay, so, but they're mulling it over, but we're going to have another meeting so we can kind of figure out what um, to do. Because they're just like, man, you know, we've got to fix the grader, we need to do something with that one ton, and then if we're going to look at this, they're like, they said, um, their comment was, well, gentlemen, uh, you're keeping it on the road another year. So Probably, no yeah. one ton this year. They said, look, if we can do the freight liner this year, or up, no, replace one of the freight liners this year, they said, mm, maybe we can squeak you out a one ton next year. So they said, keep it on the road. <laughs> so it was just, yeah. and take the plow off from it. So <laughs> it was a good. All right. Good. <clears throat> so we had um, town manager's report, which you know, we've gone over a majority of those items already, but feel free to kill us in anything else that we missed out. I don't know. So I just had a couple of questions. Uh, so, well, one is good news, actually. FEMA obligated Geico Road and the pump house. Of course, they're small projects. But anyway, so we'll be getting our money back for that okay. soon, So, which is good. Um, I'm also going to be applying for the 2021 Structures Grant. Um, for the bridge number 32 on Watershed Road. I have to have the grant in by April 15th. But um, with the 35000 that we've got aside, we know we need to do the bridge rail on the East, Ran East Bethel Bridge and also do update the decking. We have to do some stuff on Peavine. So um, that's a bigger repair over there. So I'm going to try to get the um, structures grant in by April 15th to, to see if we get the money to deal with watershed deal with that bridge and so if not then we'll have to decide what we do with that <clears throat> if not we'll end up temporarily mm -hmm. shutting well they sometime. said we didn't need to you know like after talking to Spencer Sven the Scribner the bridge engineer was one thing but Spencer uh, Howard was like nah he just said you know it's, it's not limited and, and he went through it but he did give some advice on look what you really need to do is to get this year is to get some um, riprap place down there and up above and he outlined it for me what I need to do so I'm going to see if I can get a structures. I don't, you know, we could replace the wing wall and all that, but I don't know. It's kind of crazy. So we'll see. Anyways, that's my goal and just to try to get that done. Um, to work on that. The other one was to just briefly touch on um, is the coronavirus. So I'm just curious. My question is, what does the board feel like our responsibility is to the residents? Of Bethel. What we have done so far is taken, obviously, coming in here on uh, three you know, ways in here, 
we put a sign up about washing your hands and all that sort of stuff that came along with just like you would with the flu, but it came along with the coronavirus. We put the information for residents on Facebook along with a link to the state health department guidelines and some CDC information. So I feel like what we have been doing is just providing tools for people to read the information without creating some alarm. Right. Um, but I didn't know what the board, I mean, feels, we obviously at this point, you, you can't buy hand sanitizer, you can't buy masks, it's not like we would have been distributing them mm -hmm. to the residents mm -hmm. anyways. I just want to make sure that you feel like we are managing, or that we're doing what you want mm -hmm. done. Um, I have met with employees to talk about what happens if people are sick, what happens if people are quarantined, how we're going to manage the office, how we're going to manage water sewer, how we're going to manage road crew. We talked about the um, <coughs> fire department. Um, they obviously have mutual aid and what sort of precautions have dealt with the constable who was exposed possibly and that just became a fiasco. He had to self-quarantine for four days. Um, the the uh, person who infected him at a traffic stop ended up being typed with some specific form of influenza but not the coronavirus and um, just talked to him about the CDC protocols for law enforcement and we, you know, now we all met at town meeting, we don't have any big, <laughs> big gatherings going on, but I just want to make sure that we're doing what you feel <clears throat> I think like getting information out there to people, um, but I, I, you know, I, I'm really a strong believer that, you know, not instilling the fear of God into people. Right. We want to make sure that our local economy is strong. We don't want to be shutting down anything that we don't have to be. Um, I, mean, I think it's important that we have the information out there of where people can seek information or proper procedures, but... Um, we, we'll does Gifford put on any kind of... Uh, do, we, do we know if Gifford is a place to go for <coughs> testing? Do we no, uh, have any sense. of that kind of... We uh, have there, was, there was something I on Facebook from uh, Andy <coughs> Griffin that had a, he had a doctor up there or whoever <coughs> that put out a whole thing and it was mm -hmm. on Facebook. Yeah. White is his I last think name. Kelly had CMO. Kelly had chief done. medical officer. Yeah, yeah, Kelly had done something with that. Yeah. That's right. I saw that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was, yeah, good. It was well was, done, I thought. He, he said, you know, there's nothing they can do there. Yeah. Well, and I read it. The, the challenging thing with this, and in, in reading through everything, is that they said 80% of the people will end up. Well, 80% of the people that get it will will show no signs or symptoms. So, right. you know, it's a virus that's going to get passed without any signs or symptoms that you may not even get sick. So it's, it's very, I think his point to the article was, you have a cold. it's, yeah. it's yeah. almost impossible to figure out who do you quarantine and who you not quarantine, right. you know? Yeah. And basically him almost saying, you're probably going to get it, but here are a lot of precautionary things that you can do to try and limit your exposure to it. Big thing, you know, um, you're talking about the hand sense, but you know, soap and water is the best thing there is. Yeah. Clean your hands before because you eat. there's yep. a fatty or capsule around the virus mm -hmm. and the soap breaks that apart. And mm -hmm. yeah. I think that was the big thing, what, you have to sing the happy birthday song twice. That's yes. great. Yeah. Get under your nails and your wrists. Well, and just the, one I, the one I read the other I day. I tell my kids well, that. The mother. I said tell my kids that. The one I read the other day, it said something about like, wash your hands the same way as though that you just cut up jalapeno peppers and you're gonna touch your eye. Oh, no. that's so a great idea. So whatever that, you know, if that's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know. I mean, I think we all have opinions on it. Like, so know. you feel like just putting out the information that we've done, yep. making sure Yeah, I think you guys did a good job of that. You're, you're all happy. Yeah. With yeah. I wasn't yeah. really sure what else yeah. you would. I mean, if there's any other links to any other information that comes out from the yeah. state or whatever. That, yeah, the good thing is know. the link we put out with the state, they're, con you know, they're constantly changing that yeah. and updating. Now, obviously, Vermont yeah. got their first case and that. Um, person is in quarantine and, and oh, unfortunately in critical some conditions. Schools anyway. today too. Yeah, yeah, because there was a, yeah. and I think uh, last week there was 233 people that were being um, monitored in Vermont. Yeah. And of course, you know, the first one and whoever that is, male or female, is in critical condition, which is sad. Um, but yeah, that's what we're trying to do now. And, and we've did, you know, I've talked to the employees about, you know, what happens if, you know, the, this, these guys are infected or whatever, and you have to um, be quarantined at home. You know, how are we going to get things done? So, best thing is just have them out grading back roads of Vermont, and they'll be That's away right. from the exposure. Exactly. <laughs> so, we talked about it. And so, That's it. sorry, that was really it. I just wanted to make sure that we were, if there was anything else you wanted done, it was being done. And uh, then the other thing is, I will be leaving. 
um, on Wednesday uh, noon, and I will be back in the state of Vermont on Wait, the 21st. Are you still going? Yeah. You can make it there and back? Or? I, that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'll be back on the um, in Vermont on the 21st, which is Saturday. But um, so, as usual, whenever I leave, or be even out of contact, I always um, inform the chief, uh, fire chief and the assistant chief, and they become the emergency management in my um, absence. Um, Tim Mills is gonna stop by the office. If they need something, they're gonna funnel through Tim. If it's um, a personnel matter that can't wait, they'll call Chris Jarvis. Otherwise, I told them to hang on to it till the 23rd. And um, so I don't think it should be you know, a big deal, so. Just don't catch the virus. Right. Oh, I'm not flying, I'm driving. So if they, um, but if anybody has, um, you know, they all have my number. So otherwise, I did ask them to funnel through Tim first to clean up. But if they need something, let me know. And, okay. and uh, I will obviously be in cell phone contact full time. So that's the plan. So I've already given Kelly um, a, an agenda, a draft agenda with a couple things on it. I'll add a couple things to it and then she'll run that by you. Yeah, um, I'll, get, I'll get with her in the middle of that week. To yeah, absolutely. So that'd be great. Right. And we have select board meeting minutes from the 24th of February. Anybody have any questions in regards to any of those? Are we good to approve them as is? Make a motion to be accepted as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right, go ahead. Lisa, are you keeping a tally of how many weeks it's been without Sorry. revisions from Paul? Oh. Well, he's keeping a tally, it turns out. <laughs> Never mind. So he'll be looking at this one. <laughs> okay. Really tight. Sorry, <laughs> right, I'm sweating it. Yeah. All right. And other communications, I um, didn't see anything in our packet. Any other committees or anything? No, I have no energy. I didn't see any other committees. Did you get it? He must have. There was energy committee. Was it? Was there? Where did I? No, I'm sorry. I don't know. It wasn't in my pocket. Yeah. Oh, wait, right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it's not in Yeah. And then there was just this, this FEMA thing. And I did talk to Two Rivers, and they were going to go because I said, look, I've only been here a couple years. I downloaded the the um, information to do the survey, but I'm like, eh. I, so I emailed Peter Gregory and said, are you sending somebody? Because you guys did all this mapping and I can't answer some, a lot, I can't answer a lot of these questions. I haven't been here long enough. And uh, so they said they were sending a representative to work with them. So. Okay. But um, just wanted you guys to have it just in case you wanted to go. Okay. Okay. Right. So I ended out the, uh, in, uh, UVM extension, 75th annual town offices, education conferences. So it's if anybody already, wants to go, let Kelly know and she'll sign you up. Yeah, it's uh, 65. Has anybody not been to one of those? I have not been to one of this one. I have not. Went last Didn't somebody go last year? We went to the VLCT's select board, oh, spring right, select yeah. board thing. That's, that, yeah. This is different than that. Is okay. this the one that the town um, mm -hmm. that happens in October and it's the... No, no, I think that's the VLT. Oh, that's yeah. the Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this one is April 8th at Lake Moray, and then there's another one in uh, Burlington uh, oh, right. till the end of April. Some of these are <coughs> okay. okay. But there's listers, things, there's town clerk. Yeah, and, 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 um, and everything. I know. Um, yeah, and the VLCT know, um, one is in Montpelier. Right. There's one in October. Well, town Fair, that's what I was thinking. I've had Town yeah, Fair on yeah, the Grand no, Hall. So thing. this one, yeah, the listers are aware of it and everything. So um, oh, okay. So they have it because um, Louise gave it to me. Um, this, just the this information. This UVM yeah. one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So okay. She, I think I have it on my desk. But if anybody wants to attend, just see Kelly and she'll sign you up. Okay. All right. Do we have any other business to come before the board, or are we good? I move we adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye.